This week we spray some broad with horny juice to appease the elder gods as we discuss the 2011 meta horror to end it all. Cabin in the Woods. Hello and welcome to the Bloody Bits Horror Show. I am your host, Eddie. The Axe Jefferson and joining me as always in the back seat with a telescoping bong, it's Tim Yobo. That shit costs seventy nine ninety nine on the internet. That's the cheapest I could find that book. You found one? Wow. <laughs> I was looking for it. Come on. And when I saw this again, I was like, holy fuck, that's right. I wanted to buy one when I saw this movie, but I was high and then I forgot. Awesome. Awesome. But Tim, we are not alone on our journey through the woods. We are joined this week by the hosts of the Esoterica Cinema Podcast, Jason and Ryan. How are you guys doing today? What up, is boys? up, man? We are doing well. We are ready to talk some Cabin in the Woods. Man, this is a, this is a fun one. Thanks for having us on, man. Yeah, yeah of course. Four, just four guys in a cabin in the woods. No That's chicks. That's all, you know? And all that four guys in a hot going tub. on. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Leading and into I'll, the Manscaped ad, right? Yeah. Well, wait, yeah, is there anybody exactly. here by Chris Helmsworth? <laughs> nope. No. You know what? If you, I, I think... if you squint your eyes and, yeah. and you walk far enough back, you can kind of pretend I am. I have long blonde hair, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're drunk enough. enough and the lights are out, sure. Yeah, the physique's a little different, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. again, I can, Did you, you just know... dye it blonde by any chance? <laughs> good point. No, yeah. no, I am, I am pure platinum b- blonde right out of, uh, right, right out the gate, man. No, no, no dye necessary. No performance enhancers either, no. man. How about that? (laughs) Well, guys, thanks for joining us. We are at the tail end of Manscaped March Meta Movie Madness. And we're wrapping things up here with Cabin in the Woods. But before we do that, the first thing I want to point out is you'll notice that Candace isn't here. That's because we've read the reviews. So... I'm, I'm kidding. She's, right now, she's manscaping she, her husband. She's too no. busy to do the show. No, right now, what she's probably doing, if I had to uh, imagine, is she's Googling what the most powerful race and class combination is for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, oh, that's okay. oh, that's right. Yeah, Eddie, see, another teaser. Go ahead. Yeah, because I teased in our uh, bonus episode what the theme is going to be for Ape Role Play, you fools. Uh, we're going to be doing an entire month. All Pornhub step all, fantasy movies. All step <laughs> siblings. No. <laughs> they no always tip. have role playing in the tag, just you know, so they can kind of get away with it in certain states. No, you, you guys. Hey, from, what I, from what I understand, like D and D is anything goes, right? So if you want, the, if you want to bring that to the table, I don't think they can reject you. Ooh. It's at I'm the gonna, discretion. My character's the... name is going to be White Fire. <laughs> no shit I, I and kind of related to this no shit i was like all right i'm gonna do a D campaign with some friends this is years ago and everybody made does their character they're like oh i'm gonna do this that is that okay i'm like yeah sure whatever so we get there and everybody's in the tavern introducing themselves like you always do and it's yeah. like hello my name is uh i don't know black leaf or whatever and then we we get to this other dude he's like uh well met, ladies and gentlemen. I am Johnny Pot Smoker, and I'm like, okay, stop. <laughs> Number one, that's not as cool as you think it is. Right. <laughs> Number two, no. No, dude, oh. he's brilliant because now he just let everybody there at that meetup know he's the connect for the weed. Oh, Absolutely, he's, he's the he- plug. He's playing yeah. businessman, absolutely. And let's also remember, this is a D and D session. Cool went out the window so long ago. Yeah. You don't have to worry about being cool at D and D. True, true. Fair <laughs> I, I don't know. I love D and D. I'm yeah. not like talking shit. It's a fun game, but like, it's not cool. It's so, not what the cool kids do. See, I so was I just, hoping at 53, I was going to get in this ground floor with all the, what all the cool kids are doing by playing D and D. So I just decided I'm going to piss off probably conservatively. 50% of the audience by not doing movies next month and making a 53-year-old in Candace play D&D for the first time. Oh, wow. That's amazing. 
Yeah, but it's horror <laughs> themed. It's, so. it's a real fucking Andy Kaufman bit. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, have you thought about your character? Because there's no way you're going to take that seriously, right? Like, you're going to fuck with them somehow, right? Uh, yeah, now, after, see, Candace has got the leg up on me because she has the extra time. Right and her now husband plays. Shit up because I literally know that there's a wizard in it, which I mistakenly referred to as a magician, which, you know, I, I think oh. I just pissed off a bunch of people there. <laughs> so you're already playing, playing behind. You're starting <laughs> off behind. Go ahead. Yeah. There's got to be an elf, right? Uh-huh. Yep, yep. Uh, There's multiple elves, actually. Would there be a druid character in it? Uh, you know, yeah, that's a okay. thing. Well, I think I think and also there's kind have, of like, a... a tank, right? The, like the big no, you brute, can't. The guy you can't be a Sherman through. tank. That's not. Okay. That's not I think there's also an archetype of like the stoner elf or dwarf, so you might that's be able to kind of play something that stoner dwarf. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. I want. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, you'd be like some sort of a mountain dwarf that's just like smoking weed all day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he's like sleeping under a mushroom when you guys are fighting dragons and shit. I'm eating that mushroom. Fuck that shit before <laughs> we play the game. Hey, you know, if somebody wants to send me some mushrooms in the mail. Tim, don't. Before we play d <laughs> he's, he's off fighting dragons of his <laughs> own accord, like in real life. Tim, I've got to remind you. Bro, it's you. with dice over here at the table. I got this, bros! <laughs> Those dice are so fucking big. <laughs> don't, don't actually send illegal drugs to Tim in the mail. <laughs> They're not illegal. Hey, right? don't speak for it? Tim. Tim may not okay. want that. Tim Fair may point. be okay Fair with point. that. Okay. So really uh, Tim's dice. address. Just don't put your real return address on it, and I'm the only one accepting <laughs> the risk. Okay. Make sure it's not trackable. That's all. Fair point. No Fair point. First send it to, you know, well. care of bloody bits, and then bloody bits no. will send it to me. Well, <laughs> that's not going to happen. All right, guys. So speaking of eating mushrooms, first thing that we like to do when we start up our episodes, because Candace suggested it, and we've just taken it from her now because she's gone. Uh, she decided it was our she, idea to begin with. Yeah, it was my idea. Uh, is I like to go around the room and ask everybody what they've been consuming over the week. Mm. Now, I know I'm just springing it on you and Jason and and Ryan. Tim, you're familiar with the segment, so why don't we go to you first, buddy? Oh, I got something real good. I saw X. You saw X? I also saw X. I would love to discuss this with you. Oh, a devil. A devil. Yeah. How good is that fucking movie? I I know it's it's soon enough. I don't want to say anything and spoil it, but see that fucking movie. (laughs) Jesus so X, Christ. I'm not familiar. Is this the prequel to Vin Diesel's Triple X? <laughs> yes, this is when he's a baby. He's just it's baby the prequel, X. prequel. It's yeah. the prequel it's to the prequel. Baby X. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's actually X1, you know? So, like, Triple X was, like, X to the three, right? He was, like, there was the original Grandfather mm. X, and then there was fa- Father Double X, and then there was Son Triple X. So this goes back gotcha. and tells the story. Of Isn't the X origin of the family. racing? So, you know, look, Vin Diesel racing. Yeah, it comes full circle. Yeah, there, there you go. go. No, I really, I really, this is a movie that I heard a lot of hype about before I saw it. Mm-hmm. And it lives up to the hype. And definitely, I would say, try to see it as fast as you can before some motherfucker on Twitter or on the internet just fucking spoils it for you. Okay. With what's going on in the movie, but just chef's kiss. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, Jason, Ryan, either of you got something you want to go to or need me to go first? Yeah, no, so uh, I actually, uh, I've been kind of on a little tear here for the last few days, um, just watching like a number of films that I kind of had on my list and, and have been meaning to get to. Nice. Uh, the first is the first two of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies. Oh, yeah. Ooh! Yeah. So good. Finally yes. got into those. Now, I actually thought, apparently everyone kind of feels like they're all in the same terms. I thought the second one was a lot stronger than the first one. It felt like it was like he kind of figured out, you know, like it's well shot. There's some really artsy shots where they sort of work with the environment. Mm-hmm. But like there's also still giant geysers of blood and stuff. So yeah. it was like it's the, the best second of both one worlds. where he gets caught and he's like put in like a little bit of like a prison type thing with the. Bunch so of that's the people. third one. That's the third oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, OK. Yeah, that one's. Yeah. That All one's right. Good, so that's so. the I saw. I saw the first three. I saw I, I started watching them again about like a month ago. Because for some reason I got high. Oh, yeah. Well, it was ah, a Tuesday, yes. probably. Uh, <laughs> and I started thinking about Shogun Assassin and how great that movie was. And then I went on Shog- uh, went on the internet and Shogun Assassin is basically Lone Wolf and Cub with this yeah. part, this part, and this part all blended together. Yeah. 
Yeah, apparently, which you can see it right there too. Uh, Kill Bill was a uh, uh, Lone Wolf was a huge inspiration on Kill Bill, like so. Totally, because you know Tarantino kind of just like steals from a different property for each mm. of his movies. And I say that as a fan, I, I can say that because he's like my favorite filmmaker, so I get to talk shit a little bit. Yeah, look um, at it's it's like he's doing samples, okay? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the sample DJ, right? Take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, put it together. Make sure and, you add a uh, foot. Then you, yeah, Make sure there's more feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I dug it, and then uh, I also did something for the first time that, uh, uh -oh. yeah, that was uh, I was not prepared for, and I don't even I don't. You guys may or may not have done this on the show, but uh, you, have you guys ever seen Tetsuo, the Iron Man? No, no. is that no. the one? Oh my wait, god, is that the one with the chick in the car on the cover? No, oh, wait, no, no, so, no. Oh wait, oh yeah, you know, I think you were tweeting about that. I saw it on the. On I Twitter. was, yeah. yeah so, okay, so this yeah, is yeah, like yeah. late '80s Japanese, basically like. Hyper sexual, oh, with the violence, meth head motherfucker, like, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like so. Basically, imagine like a super abrasive, like techno hypersexual with like this droning industrial music and just like screaming, like nonstop screaming for like sixty five minutes, and you're like, I should have hated this, but I didn't. What the fuck is wrong with me, right? Uh, but yeah, but it's it's kind of one of those things like it's certainly an abrasive experience. It's an hour and five minutes. Oh, and it also gives me a chance to plug my favorite, favorite service of all. Have you guys uh, do you guys know about Canopy at all? Have you guys heard of that? No. Okay, so I, I I recommend this to everybody. There's this awesome, awesome streaming service. It's called Canopy with a K and you use your library card. And it's completely oh, free. And okay. if you don't have a library card, you can go online and get one digitally in like point yeah, three seconds. Yeah, I have a digital library card. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dude, go to Canopy. You use your library card. You get set up. You get somewhere between eight to ten free viewings a month, and they're all completely unedited and completely commercial free. Doesn't cost you a dime. And they have some really obscure shit. So I found Tetsuo on there. Um, I also found this, like, uh, late 70s sort of, like, uh, documentary about Watts called Killer of Sheep that I've been trying to find forever. They had that mm. on there. They've got Reanimator on there. They've got Criterion Discs on there. So, like, nice. if you're at all a film fan, go to Canopy. It's the dopest site, and they have and all these awesome library, movies for so. free. Yeah. yeah. And while you're at it, maybe pick up a book or two with your library card. Yeah. Yeah, you can get ebooks. Yeah, it's yeah, just exactly. not for perverts going and looking at porn on computers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay? Exactly. No, no. They Take have these back the libraries books. from the perverts, people. <laughs> exactly. So what about you, Ryan? You got anything you've been consuming? Uh, well, I, I had seen X. Um, I do agree. I liked it for not the reasons I expected to like it. Um, it was mm -hmm. a completely different film than I walked in to see. Uh, not Well, I shouldn't say completely different, but it definitely was different. And... Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know that there's a, even spoilers. It just kind of is different in tone. And, um, and, and uh, yeah, the whole thing was a very yeah, well, weird Yeah, not spoilers, situation. but it just goes off in a direction that you're not going to expect that that's what's going to be happening. Right, right. But And it took a little longer, uh, again, keeping this spoiler free, it took a little longer to get revved up and going than I thought. It, it really stayed with your main characters and let uh, a lot of the tension build for quite some time um, until you really got down to it. And then the act three was just a whirlwind. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cause uh, it's only like an hour and 35 minutes. Right. Right. But um, the, the one thing that was a very pleasant surprise is the characters and the cinematography and the, the muted performances and the uh, well-paced score all lent itself to where I was never bored, um, you know, uh, until we got to those moments that uh, you go to see a slasher. I mean, because it's, not, it's no secret that it's a 70s yeah. era style slasher film. So it's you're going to see a slasher and the execution movie. execution yeah. of it, yeah. Correct. No pun intended. Yeah. So like the uh, it just took a little while to get to said execution of it. But, uh, but you know, while you were in those other moments... Um, you know, fantastic. Mia Goth is just a queen. I love her so much, and uh, anything she's in is she's the best part of that thing. And this there is, no is something whenever she's on the camera, you just can't take your eyes off of her. Yeah, she's captivating in her performance. It's just a very muted, stoic performance that draws you in. You're like, that what's up with really this? That's really creepy one? coming from me, but yeah, I mean, well, I was, a good actress. I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm on your show. I, I'm bringing the creep here. 
<laughs> but, but also uh, on top of that, not to, not to you know borrow your answer, I'll come up with my own. I have been watching uh, not a movie but a series on HBO called Winning Time about the 1980s oh, era yeah, Lakers yeah. Mm-hmm. from Adam McKay starring John C. Riley. Uh, John C. Riley is fantastic as mm. always. Oh, yeah. Steals the show. Um, lots never of been like in anything bad. No, yeah, I, I'd be hard pressed to find anything that would. If you could point out something that was bad, he was in. It wasn't because he was in it. Um, but you know, a lot of uh, super sixteen and even super eight millimeter uh, footage, super grainy. They really lean into the retro stuff. Uh, they're breaking the fourth wall all the time. Uh, some people I've read online don't like that. It hasn't bothered me. I'm really a fan. I've been enjoying it so far. So yeah, been into that. Awesome. Now, now I got to check out X. You guys got me sold on it. <laughs> it's guys. not. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing I saw. It's yeah. definitely interesting. Um, gotcha. I, I would love to discuss it with you off air, spoiler free uh, or spoiler filled after you've seen it and, okay. and hear what you thought. We'll have to do that then. Yeah. So what have I been consuming this week? Well, <clears throat> of course, Elden Ring, because everybody's consuming it and it's consumed me. It's a great game. Um Make sure you play. What level are you? Or like, how far are you into the game? Oh, I am at the second boss, and I'm level thirty six. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm learning this timing and everything. To somebody, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm I'm just learning this timing, sitting back, taking a couple of shots here and there. You know, learning the whole pattern, learning the vibe of the the fight. It's fun. Uh, Other than that, can I ask you a question? When you get killed. Mm-hmm. How far does it reload you back into the game? On this boss fight? Yeah. Um, probably about eight seconds. No, so, uh, so if you get killed and you mm-hmm. just re, like respawn, you're only like what, like ten feet away from going back into the fight. It's not one of those things where like In... you all the way over at the fucking like the other side of the mountain. So that <laughs> depends. They they are nice enough to put save spots right in front of boss fights like this. Oh, but that's you, cheap. that's cool. Yeah, but you can be all the way across the fucking map, die. And here's the thing you're going to love, Tim. You have to run back to where you died at to get your experience points back. Otherwise, if you die again on the way there, you lose all your EXP that you had on you that you didn't spend. Oof. Uh, well, they kind of do the same thing with the, the game I'm playing, uh, the um, Rainbow Six Extraction. If you, one of your operators gets killed, mm-hmm. you have to, in the next mission you have to try to catch them, get them back, rescue them. If you don't, you lose all the experience points that they built There up. you go. So you're playing a Souls game then, Tim. <laughs> no, this one's fun. This one's better. This one, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to smash my fucking 65-inch TV like I see people on the internet wanting to do Those with this people game. don't understand how to play that game, man. <laughs> if, you, if you're getting mad at Elden Ring, it's not for you. That's all I got to say. Uh, so other than that, though, I've dipped back into one of my favorite um, stupid guilty pleasures to watch on television, and that's that show, The 60 Days In. Oh, when is the new season coming out? Because the last one was the one where the prison guard pretty much took over the whole fucking jail, right? Was that the, is that season six? I think that's, uh, I don't know which one it is, uh, what season it is, but the last one where they bring him in, right? Mm-hmm. And then they have to bring him back because all the other tough motherfuckers who are like, hey, I was a Marine for 15 fucking years, nothing's going to stop me. Tap out 35 seconds into the fucking holding yep. cell all okay, by Okay, this is it. Yeah, yeah, this is that season. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, what, what is the show? You guys are like oh my really God. Okay. excited about so this, man. So they, they take assholes, right? And they complete say, hey. Complete assholes. Complete you assholes. You tough? Okay. And they're like, all right, hey, asshole, I'm going to give you 10 grand if you'll go into prison for 60 days. Oh, right? oh wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So then the, the idiots are like, well, Plus, I'm tough. Plus, that, but they want you to be a rat while you're in there. <laughs> so <laughs> bad. Okay. No, Tim, I'm so hey, for glad. for 10 you... grand and possibly losing your life, you want to do this? Tim, I'm so glad you fucking brought this up because the, the first thing I thought, right, is they're like, hey, we're going to give you 10 grand to go in there for 60 days. No, I'm not going to do that. I make more than that outside, so fuck you. 
So <laughs> second, I was thinking, it's equivalent of like a sixty grand salary. I feel like that's like a little should be a little okay. more. So let's say, but then they're like, oh, and by the way, I want you to go try to find all the contraband you can. That's drugs, shivs. Figure out who's like dealing, who's smuggling mm-hmm. in. If there's yeah. dirty cops, and then be our eyes up. and ears. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Not only, don't only write out the prisoners, but we want you to write out the secure the prison Everybody. guards. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, you suck because you've never been to prison, so you don't know what the fuck you're doing in there. Now. My first thought is, okay, so how much extra are you going to pay me for that? Nothing? Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to be reading a book. Here's the deal. (laughs) If you say, all right, Eddie, I'm going to give you, I mean, what's a realistic number? I'm going to give you $100,000 to go in for 60 days. That's after taxes. 60 Uh days, right? I might consider that. But then they're like, all right, we also want you to get drugs and that kind of stuff for, for free. Which, by the way, also they tell you. If while you're in prison, if you do anything illegal, yep. you can be prosecuted for it. Yep. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't. This is like, you want you buy to some drug drugs and get bin. a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero protection. <laughs> now, if they said, listen, if you can get a tank. 10 grand well, pre-tax. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Now, if they're like, look, <laughs> by the way, it's 100 grand out the door. Uh, but if you can get a shank while you're in there, we'll give you another five Gs. <laughs> if you can get some drugs while you're in there, we'll give you another twenty thousand. Then Dude. I'm listening. Yeah, no, that and that and that brings up a good point. I was saying, like, if they had sort of like an a la carte menu of bonuses and they yeah. were tied to each of these things, now you're talking, right? So it's mm-hmm. like Eddie, mm-hmm. we'll give you a hundred grand to go in there, tax yep. free, you know, yep. sixty days. And then if you can get some drugs, that's worth twenty grand. If you could yeah. rent this dude out, that's worth fifty grand. Now mm-hmm. all of a sudden you've got some incentive. Exactly. But I've got a better show. T- Every time you get butt raped, you got to get five grand back. Oh, <laughs> that's the caveat. Oh. Big money, big money, big money. No whammies. <laughs> I don't think the show oh, plenty of whammies, any, bro. Plenty of whammies. I don't think there was any ass rape in the show. It's not like no. more than the SVU. But there was a season where there was this guy going around who was just giving out hand jobs to people. <laughs> what? So yeah. it's like a character in a West. I think Anderson it was movie. season four. Just Big like, motherfucker too. Like you look at this guy. Like hey, he can probably take care of himself in a fight. He doesn't have to do this. Just like I voluntarily. Felt, like he's hey, just doing it for the pleasure. Yeah. Free handy. Well, yeah, yeah, well, no, maybe, maybe that's how he got his hand exercises in. He had some big, meaty paws, and he's like, bro, I just oh, got to keep working them out. He's doing reps. I got you. Yeah, exactly. Everybody only gives you one side of the coin about what you're supposed to do on your first day of prison. Yeah. You know, like yeah. how you always <laughs> find the biggest guy, go in there and beat the shit out of him. This guy just flipped that coin. He just yeah. went in there. He found the biggest you, guy, and he beat the shit out of him. And what you do is you go find the person that everybody else has beaten the shit out of, and you beat the shit out of him. <laughs> No, so see, you, you're not you, guys, you guys are going the wrong way. you got to lean into the handy. Find the biggest, baddest motherfucker there. <laughs> look him straight in the eye and be like, bro, want the best hand job of your life? Yeah. Done. Yeah. No one's fucking with you. Bro, jack me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn We're making it. friends here. We're making friends here. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you what, though. If I was in prison and I was uh, forcing people to, to jack my dick off, you know what I'd want to do? What's that? I'd want to make sure I had well-groomed and clean balls. <laughs> a masterful, uh, masterful transition he wants, he wants his, from uh, Mr. Nickname, the Axe. His, his prison nickname is going to be Cue Balls. <laughs> <laughs> because this episode of the Bloody Bits Horror Show has been brought to you by Manscaped. That's right. Splish, splash. I was taking a bath and noticed I have beautiful balls. That's in the ad copy. <laughs> Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist hygiene, are turning men's global. shower... Global. Global. Yeah. Oh, okay. nice. Nice. In, uh, Across glo- the whole sphere. hey Both of them are turning men's shower dreams into their favorite routine with the all-new Ultra Premium Collection. Mm. So if Did you've you got mention the- sour dreams when we're talking about prison sex? <laughs> No. <laughs> so if you have the the regular premium collection, you need to throw that fucking thing out the window. <laughs> right now. I don't care okay, if there's traffic. Right. Here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw okay. it out the window and you get me on the sound effects and post. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to check. Well, hold on here. Uh, okay, Are you on. sure? Let me, thank okay. you. I didn't let him go. That was a practice. Right, go for round. it. Ready? You go. Yeah. How high up do you live? Oh, shit. Take that regular set. 
Because <laughs> you got the ultra premium collection. Bam. The all, all in one hygiene <laughs> skin and hair bundle. And it's designed to upgrade the every man's shower routine. Tim, you were talking about how you needed to upgrade your shower routine the other day. I'm always looking for a way to upgrade the shower. Anytime mm. I can spend more in the shower, you know, away from my wife, it's a little bit better. That's right. <laughs> and you know what you can do is uh, you can get this thing for your skin, hair, and balls. Because your <laughs> balls don't have any skin or hair, apparently. <laughs> well, just they did kinda... at one point. <laughs> but that wasn't but that because, was before Manscaped. Yeah, that was before Manscaped. Right, right. You didn't like cut your ball skin off with Manscaped. Well, no, they you're don't fine. have any more hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Manscaped, uh, you're not cutting your balls off because you got the LED light. Well, your your skin, hair, and balls deserve this, though, Tim. And you can save big by going to Manscaped.com for twenty percent off plus free shipping around the world. Ooh, the like, entire the world. Globe. So mm-hmm. like so, if I wanted to buy my friend in say South Africa, I, could, mm-hmm. I might get free shipping on that. You would if you use promo code Bits twenty at checkout. Wow. So Tim, did, you got the new package, right? Yes, I got the yeah, nice little care package, the said. ultra premium oh, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, me too. And uh, Candace got it, our our co host, and she uh, was. Remarking at how good everything smelled and how she's glad that uh, her husband is using it because he used to be a smelly bastard. Mm. Yep. And now he smells good. And then I reminded her, Candace, that means when you're being intimate with your husband, he smells just like me. So does that mean that she pictures you when she's intimate with her husband? I guess she is now. I'm just saying, if, if, if <laughs> to the ladies out there that are listening, and I know there's a, a one, uh, if... <laughs> If you ever wanted <laughs> she's to She's out know, there somewhere. <laughs> Don't know why she stuck around with us four assholes, but hey, thanks for listening. Exactly. And if, if you ever wanted to know what it was like to make love to me or to Tim Yobo, all you got to do is just buy one of these packs of the Manscaped stuff mm-hmm. using promo code BITS20. Forget uh, all those scented candles. You know, mm-hmm. with lady, when you have your lady time all mm-hmm. by yourself, you know, the kids out of the house, the husband yeah. out of the way, you lighten up all those scented candles. Just open up some Manscaped and smell it. Yeah. Eddie, I mean, since since it came up, I got to admit, that's 100% why I bought the Ultra Premium Package. Is yeah, yeah. Because I always wondered what sex with What's Eddie the like Jefferson might bang. be like. And now I don't have to wonder anymore. If you, but, if now, you wanna... not only that, but now you can leech off of it. Now women are going to smell you and they're going to be like, oh, wow, that smells like Eddie the Axe. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You throw away the Axe perfumes and stuff that, that uh, you had as a teenager. You can get this stuff. You know what? I should come up no, with a Manscaped line. No, Manscaped is for men. Axe is for, for little fucking boys who want to pretend to be men, right? That's right. Ah, yes. But and you can pretend that the man that you're having sex with is me or Tim uh, by buying them this with promo code Bits twenty. And if you don't have a significant uh, other partner, you can just go pay somebody. You can get a sex <laughs> worker and then have them uh, use this. That's fine. If Absolutely. it's legal you where could, you're you could at. You probably pay them in the ultra premium set. So oh. because of that, you should stock up. You know, you're going to want yeah. at least five or six of oh these things. Oh, my God. And if you're getting 20% uh, you, off, I'm that's money on money. I'm over uh, giving them away in a barter system. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I prefer to have both, You barter right? that shit away one time, but that fucking deodorant, the shampoo, the body lotion, all that yeah. shit's going to last you a long time. Well, no, see, but here's the thing. Here's the beauty of it is the, the net value of the package is worth more than you're paying. So you're exactly. paying that seventy nine ninety five, but if you can turn that into a hundred and twenty dollars or a hundred and fifty dollars worth of barter value, suddenly it's working for you. Yeah, it's making you money. You can't afford not to buy it. So go to manscaped.com and use promo code BITS twenty to save twenty percent at checkout and get free shipping anywhere in the world. Take care of your bits. Yeah. Don't be a fool when it comes to your tool. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they literally pay you for that? That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, you know what? I think they probably just bought all the copyrights to so all the clever little fucking puns I'm coming up with all this shit. No, no, If no, I see they a fucking negotiated. commercial on <laughs> UFC about don't be a fool f- yeah. with your tool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's some sue them. There's if some you, fine print there that we totally missed where, yeah, everything we just said yeah. is now their property. If you turn um, on, like, late night. But at night, least my deodorant smells good. My armpits smell good. My if armpits on, smell just like my balls, which is really confusing to my wife and my cat. You know, you guys are really flexible because I can't tell you how many times I try to smell my balls and I just can't get down there. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do, do, some, some, do some yoga or something. I don't know, man. Fingers resolved for elsewhere. 
Yep, there you go. Uh, no, yeah, I can just see they're on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. They're going to have him shaving his balls live on the show. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, that fucker, he took my bit. <laughs> You All know, right. for real, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't even, this isn't even a hard take, is how the, how the fuck is that cocksucker on that fucking TV show, on that, <laughs> on that classic fucking show, that's the guy that they give it to? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know I'm like 20 years late to the uh, heat on Jimmy Fallon part. Yeah, meanwhile, they, they put... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, made, I made peace with it a long time ago. You're not wrong, it's just, you know, I've had this I mean, conversation. I him over time, Conan? You know? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny, because uh, I actually... Uh, Eddie, have you grown up in out here in L.A. as well your whole life? No, no. I grew up in Washington, just just recent to L.A., like last 10 years. Oh, yeah. So it's funny because uh, Jimmy Kimmel, dude. Jimmy Kimmel was the sports guy on K-Rock. Yeah. So, like, I literally remember when he would just do dumb stoner bits with Adam Carolla and then yep. read yes. the weather. And now this guy's making, like, bank every single year on a nationwide audience. And it's like, dude... Like, there's no way you if you go back to like J, you know Jimmy Kimmel at 22 years old interning at K Rock and tell him what his future holds, like he's not buying it, dude. Oh, I know. He's like in between joints, like nah, bro, you got the wrong guy. Even on the Man I was Show, just listening like... to a podcast called What a Creep, and it was about Adam Carolla, and they were talking oh, yeah. about how Jimmy Kimmel was a sports DJ at the radio station that Carolla was on, mm -hmm. and they struck up a friendship, and they went on and. One of them grew up, matured, and the other one stayed a little fucking prick asshole. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's Guess which one. Yeah, yeah well, I know. Uh, I know. Carolla, uh, he was actually a caller on Kimmel's show first. He would just pretend to be this old like woodworker character, and then yeah, eventually, Mr. Bersham. Yep, yep. Yeah. And then eventually Jimmy had to do some boxing stunt for the station. And, yes, uh, that's right. And Carolla was a boxing t yep. instructor. Yeah, because yep. he couldn't do any job for more than six months. He kept getting like, all different jobs. Yeah. yeah. So then he kind of taught him. But fuck them. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> Cabin in the Woods. Which, yes. uh, yeah. So 2011, Cabin in the Woods. Tim, what is your history with this film? Uh, I love this fucking movie. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember when it first came out and I saw it, I was just like, just, I thought everything was just, it was, it's almost like a perfect horror movie. It's one of the movies that, by all reasonable standards, there shouldn't be any other horror movies after this, right? Because of what it does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I get what you're saying with it, it because it's... Well, I'm glad there's other movies after it, but I'll... it's kind of like, uh, if anything, I would think like, this is kind of like what Unforgiven did to Westerns. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go even nerdier and say what Bioshock Infinite did to the Bio Bioshock series. Oh, that's nerdy, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought for a moment I thought you were going to say what Biodome did for the uh, American yes. comedy. Yes, yep, Biodome for the American comedy, that's true. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what about you, Jason? What's your history with this film? Yeah, so this is a movie that um, I saw when it came out and really enjoyed it. And it didn't, it was one of those ones that, you know, I, I dug it, but I don't think that I enjoyed it quite as much as everyone else did. Um, and I think it was just kind of one of those things because I... Uh, Actually, this is only the second time that I've seen it. I haven't seen it since that first time. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and I enjoyed it. I don't think, like, way more because I did enjoy it the first time. But, yeah, definitely enjoyed it a lot more this time. Uh, especially because <laughs> – and, Ryan, you'll be able to appreciate this. Um, have you guys ever seen Tucker and Dale versus Evil? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we are in the minority, Ryan and I, of people that absolutely hate that film. And really? we actually, like – we've gotten more, like, hate comments about – disliking that film than literally any other comment we've ever had and in my opinion like as By i was way, watching we this, love that movie at the bloody uh, pits of course you do because <laughs> fucking everybody does that's good that's all right <laughs> but no never... but as i as i was watching it i was like this is exactly what i wanted tucker to dale and be like all of the notes that it's hitting the sense of fun uh, like it just Everything, like I said, it was pitch perfect in terms of the notes that it hit, where it was jumping back and forth between the satire and the meta commentary, and yeah. then also just being an actual horror movie and checking off yeah. all of those boxes, Can and all of that, you know, leading up into this insane third act, which I adored, that really brought oh, everything yeah. together for mm -hmm. me, so... Yeah, man, I dug it a lot. If, if you guys haven't yet, check out Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. I have not. What is that? Oh, that's a that, movie, yeah. Yeah, go into it as blindly as okay, you can. Cool. It's uh, if you dug this for those reasons specifically, you're, you're probably going to like that. Awesome. Uh, Ryan, what about you? What's your history with this film? 
I have seen this movie probably two dozen times, and I okay. love this film so much. It's a, it's a quick, easy watch. Let's start with that. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it gets in, it gets out, it knows when to see itself out, and uh, – and it just it never lose takes it never takes its foot off the gas. It's just a constant escalation, uh, and it's got uh, it's got something that Dale and Tucker doesn't have, and that's uh, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford, who I yeah. think make yes. this movie. They make this movie, it right? If, <laughs> so if great, they're dude. not in this movie, if this movie might not be good. No, Correct. They, they're the heart of this movie. Yeah. For they really are. Sure. I, sure. I even had a had a little uh, come to Jesus moment with myself, and had to ask myself: Are they? Are, would you would we consider them the protagonists of this film? Is it their movie? Yeah. It opens on yeah, them. It I, is. Yeah, you know, I know it closes without them, but uh, I kind of do feel like they're the the glue of this whole thing that holds this so, whole thing together. Because of how weird this is, with the different layers of meta element that are yes. dealt with, I yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying here you you there is a read of this that they are specifically the protagonist it's a playable lie yeah yeah Yeah. i think that that's uh that that's definitely but i i've also been a fan of drew goddard uh for some time now um Mm -hmm. i loved uh bad times at the el royale that was a real big bummer that that underperformed at the box office um i was even a big fan of uh some of the stuff he was uh dipping his toe in early on in his career like lost and the martian um, those yeah. were solid endeavors to me. Of course, uh, he was producer and, and partially responsible for the Daredevil Netflix series, which I really enjoyed <laughs> as well. So, um, you know, I kind of just had to excuse the problematic uh, title at the top that Joss Whedon was involved in this and kind of like, OK, you know, I get it. It's, it's like when you see the Weinstein Company logo yeah. on the front of uh, the Matrix, but you want to watch the Matrix. So you're like, eh, fuck it. You know, you just got to do it sometimes. Yeah, a yeah. little, little rough having him involved with it. Uh, um, you know, look at it this way. That's a complete asshole, and Weinstein, of course, is a complete asshole. But what about all the other fucking people behind the scenes? Oh, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. I'm looking at this as a Drew Goddard vehicle, as a Bradley Whitford, uh, Richard Jenkins vehicle. Well, and yeah. We'll just, you yeah. know, and it, and it kind of I mean, gave uh, Hemsworth a career, too, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Wait, you see, you my question is, yeah, wasn't this after? Because I remember when I saw this movie, I was like, wow, I can't believe that they got this guy to be in the movie. So, yeah. they, so was they, it one of those they, things they, where he hit first and then they already made no. this movie and they released so, it? Or? I'll, I'll give you a little background, uh, or maybe you guys already know this, but uh, this was an MGM product. And uh, MGM has been passed around Hollywood more times than a cheap hooker. So... Um, they uh, produced this, and then it got shelved after it was filmed. And Goddard and Whedon didn't even think it was going to come out because uh, Whedon, or excuse me, uh, MGM got purchased, and um, nobody knew this movie existed. And then Lionsgate took it out and uh, released it two years later. And in that time, uh, Hemsworth had gotten Red Dawn, and then on that he got Thor. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so this came out actually right oh, on shit, the heels that's right. of he was Thor. Red Dawn, the remake. Yeah, yeah. So this came out after that. So uh, they actually got bargain basement discount of uh, Hemsworth because at the time this was released, he was Thor in the MCU, but they were paying him pre-Red Dawn prices. Mm -hmm. It's like having a a quarterback on a rookie contract. You know, you're not paying him. He's killing it. Like Joe Burrow's going to the Super Bowl. He's making nothing, you know. (laughs) That was Hemsworth and Cabin in the Woods. When they showed the screenshot of uh, – because I ended up watching it on Amazon, and they have him on, like, the screenshot. And I totally thought it was his brother when I chalked it up. I was like, oh, they got discount Hemsworth for this one. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, no. No, they got Chris. Wow. Mm-hmm. Good, good job. Yeah, because I, really, I remember when I saw it, I was like, wow, holy shit, that's fucking Thor. And I was like, yeah. it had to be a movie that he made right before they signed into Thor because yep. it's a great mm-hmm. movie, but it doesn't have the fucking budget to get Thor in it. Yeah. No. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, so I went into this one blind, actually. The first time I saw it, I just said, oh, Cabin in the Woods. Uh, that's a horror movie, clearly. I'm going to watch it. No no clue what any of the fourth wall break or meta elements of this were, were going to be. And I remember I watched it. I was like, fucking shit. Okay, this, I mean, I kind of had a moment like you, Tim. I'm like, well, shit, they just solved horror movies, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they just made a big meta verse for all of it to exist in, and it nailed it so yeah i mean i was a big fan of it ever since the first time i saw it and when we talked about doing a meta month it was the i thought it was the only one you could end that month on because it it covers it all i mean yeah 
Clearly. When Jason said we were covering this film for you guys, uh, I could I, I was so excited for this episode because <laughs> mm-hmm. it gave me an excuse to go back and rewatch it. Uh, you know, sometimes you get so caught up in the, in, you know, in each of our respective shows. You know, we're always having homework. We're always moving forward. Then it gets hard to go back and rewatch some of your favorites because yeah. you just don't have the time. And it's hard to justify taking a couple hours and going back to a film like this when I've got three other movies to watch for our yeah. show or your show or this show. So, uh, yeah, the, the, every time I get an excuse to go back to one of my favorites like this, it's... Oh, yeah. Good, Sometimes good you stuff. get a happy accident. Like when, when I was on yeah, you guys right. for uh, Perfect Blue. You know, we yeah, covered it on our show. That's right. Like, that's right. Yeah. Love that movie. So there you go. That was a good one. Although, right. you know, a little more depressing than this episode's been so far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of a... Well, it's a rough story, about. but it's a good yeah, one. Yeah, slightly different yeah. storyline, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like you guys said, written by Joss Whedon of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, and later Avengers and Justice League. But uh, more importantly, written and directed directorial debut of Drew Goddard, who worked, as you said, on Lost, Cloverfield, producer on 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was really good. Did not it. get Great nearly movie, what yes. it deserved. Best Cloverfield movie. Definitely. <laughs> no, by the way, real quick, I have to throw this out there. Do you mm-hmm. guys know that I have tried to watch Cloverfield three different times. Every single time, I fall asleep within 20 minutes. No joke. <laughs> it's Every you know, it's one time. of those movies, yeah, it, it, it kind of does put you to sleep. It's like one of those things where like, if you're an epileptic, don't watch certain movies because of flashing. Yeah. If you're a narco- narcoleptic, don't watch fucking... <laughs> I think it's because it's so dark. Like, I've thought about that. Like, I think a lot of times when films are just overly dark and muddied and there's not, like, a ton of, like, you know, color, contrast, whatever, like, it just kind of has this sort of, like, visual lulling effect or something. I don't know what it is, but I could just tell you, like, I apparently cannot watch that movie. It's just impossible. Plus, that guy, the main character, reminds me of Zack Snyder. Even though I like Zack Snyder, some of his movies, I don't want to see him uh, look like him in a movie. <laughs> gotcha. Fair point. <laughs> Uh, so then we've got starring Kristen Connolly as Dana. Uh, her previous horror work includes one of the, the everybody's favorites, The Happening. <laughs> <laughs> the Mark Wahlberg, the Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Deadly Plants vehicle. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, she was From girl Shyamalan. on the bench. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of oh, Shyamalan people With in this. With the new girl, right? What's that? No, it's this girl, I think. She she looks kind of like her. She but she she's a discount version, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she also went on to star in the movie The Bay. So, a couple Bay. of things like in B-A-E horror. B A E or Y B A Y. She was either also way, in House either of way. Cards. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a horror movie. I recognized movie. her from House of Cards. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She did. She definitely was around on a mm-hmm. bunch of TV series as well. Uh, then you got Chris Hemsworth, of course. He's Thor. That's really all you need to know there. Uh, very By the way, famous. looking very much like a normal human before he got on yeah. whatever like HGH diet yeah. that gives him those jack biceps and shit. But still looking big, right? Oh, big. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean he was a super handsome, dude. Super, still like very, but not just like I, like I don't know, dude. Like now when you look at like pictures of him like with his shirt off, it's just like, dude, like what? Like it looks like there's a small animal within each of your arms. It's insane. Yeah, he looked yeah, more human here yeah, than exactly. uh, what he became. Less godlike. Yeah, yeah less, less god of thunder, that's for sure. Uh, then we've got Anne Hutchinson, who was Jules, mostly a bunch of TV credits, not a lot of horror stuff. So we'll go ahead and bypass her and get to Fran <laughs> Kranz, who was Marty, Tim. Hey, my hero. I yes. First of all, I could have sworn, because if you would have asked me, because I haven't seen this movie in a long time, I would have sworn that it was DJ Quails. But close enough, right? No, he wasn't. Probably went to him first and wanted too much money. So (laughs) yeah, he's like, I'm a DJ Quails, man, motherfucker. (laughs) I'm a DJ now. They're like, no, you're not at all. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, Well, here's some other fucking him for your party. (laughs) (laughs) Here's some other roles DJ Quails might have turned down and let Frown take, and that is, uh, he was in The Village. Was another M Night Shyamalan. Film by the you. You know, by, everybody by, gives that guy too much credit. Oh, dude! By the way, uh, the village is one of my all-time bottom five. Like, hate, hate, hate that fucking movie. It's so bad. Really it's bad, such a man. stupid motherfucking. I, I don't right? know which is a stupid a fucking idea that or the happening. <laughs> For real. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's this movie because the 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 entire movie. 
the, the twist is that, like, the entire movie doesn't exist at all. It's basically him fucking with you for 90 minutes and then being like, ha ha, none of that's real, gotcha, bitch, just wasted yeah. all your time. Yep. I, I don't know, you guys, you guys ready for this hot take? Oh, okay. I like I liked it. I like that movie. Boo! Boo. I like that movie. <laughs> you like, I like the that village. Movie. You're the Candace of the show right now. Just I like the Candace village. Somebody uh, doesn't need to fill this. I hate the acting. The only thing it has going for it is I think Roger Deakin shot it right, so it looks gorgeous. But like that's it. That's all. I'm it look. You. It Fuck looks gorgeous. Movie. It plays out like a Twilight Zone episode, you know, where the rug yeah. gets pulled out okay. at you at the end, and you know uh, what? Nah. Things I'm, aren't I'm, as no, good as they seem. No, 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 no. This is more like the waking up and it was all a dream. back and they're all fucking dolls inside of a fucking Salvation Army. Box. Yeah, this I'll, is what I'm talking about. I'll give you that. A lot of his movies play out like a Twilight Zone episode. The problem is they're movies. That's fair. That's they're a fair not assessment. 22 minutes with Rod Correct. Sterling doing the intro. I'll give you and outro. that one. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'll give you uh, that. Plus, when Rod Sterling was doing it, it was kind of new. Oh, and Tim, uh, Frank France, the, the dude that was Marty, guess, guess who else he was? He was uh, Pimley in the 2017 film The Dark Tower. Ah. Wow. Which, which character was that? Pimley. P-I-M-L-I. Pimley. Tim, you know The Dark Tower, right? It's hard to uh, figure out who that is because they worked seven fucking novels yeah. <laughs> into 92 right. minutes of movie. So I'm thinking that's one of the TikTok guys, maybe. Could be. Are you guys fans mm. of the, the books, by the way? Have you guys read the books? Hell yeah. Tim is. Dude, oh, yeah. yeah, I, uh, I, man, that was... when Eddie died, uh, I was crying on the fucking subway. I'm still here. <laughs> so the, that was a series that I, I can't kind of came late to. It was like, I think, I don't know, five or six years. And, and I'm one of those people where it's like, I, I don't do like stuff back to back. Like I want to like slow play it. Right. So I can get as much time as possible. Mm-hmm. So I just now bought Song of Susanna book six. Um, so I'm almost done with the series finally. Oh boy. Sorry for yeah. ruining it for you. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, thanks for spoiling. I was just thinking that. <laughs> well, when did that come out, Tim? Uh, well, uh, here's how far back I go with it. I remember buying Stephen. The first Stephen King book I ever read was Pet Cemetery, mm-hmm. and that got me hooked. And then I remember in the beginning of the book where they would list all the other novels. Yeah. They would have that, and they yeah. would have and the Dark Tower. And I'm going to Barnes and Noble. I'm going into fucking B. Dalton. I'm going into all the fucking books that I can find, and nobody has that fucking book. That was like the, uh, it was like an impossible book to find. Oh, you should so have when just they gone on Amazon, it, Tim. And then he started. The, now you can buy it on fucking Amazon. <laughs> but believe me, back in the day when you're reading fucking Pet Cemetery, yeah. that was an impossible book to find. That was a, mm-hmm. one of those books that would have cost like fifty or sixty bucks back then to buy it. Damn. Yeah. All right, so, so I think it's one of my it. all-time favorite series. Nice. Dude. It's the worst thing that ever happened is he rushed it because he thought, I guess he felt his own mortality after the fucking car accident yeah. and he's like, mm-hmm. I have to finish this because I remember hearing stories, who knows if this is true, just publicity shit that, you know, people with cancer were writing him, "Please, I'm dying in 3 months. Tell me what's happening. Yeah. What's going to happen to Roland? Was... What's going to happen at the end yeah. of the book?" So he felt like he had to get it out, and he no, kind of no. rushed the ending. That was his I'm not publisher. Exactly happy with the ending, I can live with it. But it's one of my all-time favorite series. Yeah, right, no, so which just... book is your favorite then, out of the seven? <sighs> or if you want to include uh, "Went Through the Keyhole" or whatever it is. Uh, I think I can't remember. I think it's maybe "Wolves of the Collar," where you get the priest jumps from this world to that world. I might be getting yeah. them all mixed up. Maybe it's Wizards the, the, the That might be Wizards in Glass. Where I, the I priest comes into it. Where, uh, well, here's the big thing. If you're up to it, you'll know it. Uh, it's when uh, Someone Saved My Life Tonight by Elton John plays a big part in the book. Yeah, I think that's five. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, mine's, with mine's the club, too. yeah. Oh man, oh, there's so many good fucking things, and all, all how all the other fucking novels fit into it, and yeah, fucking reading insomnia, and just one fucking line in that book, and I'm like, oh fuck, it's a dark tower book. <laughs> awesome. Just we can move on. You're talking about the dark tower. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Let you guys nerd out on your nerd stuff. You're giving me shit about D and D. Talking about Elton John songs and a fucking. Oh wait, can Stephen I be a gunslinger King. in D and D? 
Absolutely, no, there's, you can. There's no you guns in D&D. You should be named Roland, 100. There you go. Fuck or it. you can, or you can be a wizard called the Man in Black. Either way, whatever. You there mean. you go. You be a wizard, Tim. Well, my Xbox game tag is our flag 905. So, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't pick uh, our flag in our uh, fantasy draft, Tim. Fuck, see, well, oh, see, oh, see, because I'm thinking movies, okay? Yeah, and yeah. I want to forget the he Dark was Tower. In, he, was, he, was, he was in the stand, right? Uh, yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> All right, yeah. so we've also got Jesse Williams as Holden. Uh, again, bunch of TV stuff. He didn't really do any horror. Uh, then Is he the, uh, the, rec- the, the uh, wide receiver guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then the power couple, as you guys had mentioned before, Richard Jenkins. Total powerhouse. The Slitterson in this one. He was in the Manhattan Project, Miami Vice. He was the dad in Six Feet Under, one of my favorite shows ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was Giles in The Shape of Water recently. Semi recently. Yeah, that's right. He's mm-hmm. like, Dad, fuck that fish if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, if, I, if, I, remember, if I remember correctly, was he also the doctor in T2? The one that's like rehabilitating Linda, Linda Hamilton. Oh man, yeah, you're making me think back a while. Let me check IMDb. I think Wait, you, you mean the psychiatrist? Right. Yeah. No, that's a different guy. It's a different guy. Yeah. Are you Cause sure? Because like, when it's I another well, ball guy. I'm, no, There's I'm no not Richard sure. Jenkins that's why I'm is in Terminator One because, and Two. Because when uh, I when I picture it in my head, I totally see like him as the guy who's like being real patronizing with Sarah no. Connor and like talking to the no, he, shit. they kind of I can see where you're getting him mixed up yeah but yeah but not, not the same guy no guy, but he was um he was the doctor Dr. Robert Duback in Step Brothers maybe that's what you're confusing must uh. be <laughs> <laughs> no honestly the first uh, the, John C. The, the go-to role that I always think of is just him in Six Feet Under just picture oh, yeah, him, like, yeah. smoking and joint talking to his son about dude was so good man weird shit he did that was a great show. <laughs> and, of course, Bradley Whitford as Hadley. You know him and you love him as the dad in Get Out. But maybe his finest work as an actor, Eric Born and Billy and Madison. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Just plays a bad guy so fucking well. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like well. he's one of those people where he's probably like a genuinely nice human and he's just really good at playing skeezy assholes for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> Which he's not in this. Line. It's kind of funny, too, because really, like, if you actually look at his performance in this film, like, it actually doesn't quite match the way that it's written. Just because, like, he ultimately is a very good guy. Like, you know, like, especially the way he sort of sacrifices at the end and, like, da-da-da. But, like, he totally plays him like he's kind of an asshole. So you kind of yeah. get, like, both shades of that character. I think it's just because he looks smug. Yeah, they look at his face. And he he looks, looks like he kinda... would steal all your money in an investment scandal. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. He was in West Wing. He was in a bunch of shit. I mean, again, <laughs> another, another massive star in here. And I think uh, that's about it for the the big guys. Uh, so we can go ahead and get into breaking down the movie, unless you guys had any trivia or anything you wanted to bring up in the background. This movie's been kind of covered to death, though, I'm sure. So Can we uh, just, like, make up facts? Like, Yeah, sure. Oh, make did up you a fact. know that Clive the... Uh, signed on to this movie. No problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Use them. Yeah. No, I was going to say, uh, did you know that all of the weed that the stoner smoked was actually drew- from Drew Goddard's personal stash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Who Could gets to keep that cup? I want to know. <laughs> so I do have a trivia fact about. Him? I do have a trivia fact about that cup, Tim. It costs seventy nine ninety nine on the fucking internet. That's cheap. <laughs> For considering the ultra premium cup. Considering the prototype of it cost them five thousand dollars to make and was functional. Wait, what cup are we talking about? The, the bong. bong cup. The bong cup. Oh, that was that was very that was clever. That was, <laughs> that was genius pretty shit. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah five it, grand. It's not prototyping. practical though because you know what? That shit's gonna fucking reek, and it yeah. is hard to clean all that resin off of stainless steel compared to glass, right? Yeah. Tim, the the expert here, ladies and well, gentlemen. 
The other thing too, as Eddie, as Eddie and I know, is you guys can just move out here to California. Ain't nobody give a shit out here. You can just fucking yeah. smoke while you're driving down the boulevard. You'll be fine. Yeah, but it's still not legal to smoke and drive at the same fucking time, right? I mean, it's not legal. They discourage but, um, it. I'm hoping. Yes. Good luck yeah, finding someone to enforce it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll do you one better and say that the five thousand dollar bong is cheaper than moving to California. Too, That's so. a fair <laughs> point. It's fucking cheaper than rent out here. I'll tell you right, that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Just, oh, just stay wherever you're at. Money. Buy it the is, bong. It is absolutely a net loss in your favor. One hundred percent. But hey, it'll, at least you can uh, get high and forget about it. No, see, I'm in New York now. Now New York is the gray area because now there's stores that, like, you go in and you buy something and they give you pot for free as a gift for buying something. I always love that move. It's like with the fairs when you can't buy beer, so they'll sell you a ticket and then you use the ticket to trade it in for a beer. Yeah, I love that fucking – Now, how about this? There's a store next to me that's got a fucking sweet-ass scam running. Okay, mm-hmm. I won't give the name of it, but mm-hmm. it's got a name that as soon as you saw it, you wouldn't think exactly it's a pot store. You might think it's a sex toy store, but when okay. you see what they have in the window, you're like, whoa, I really want to go in. Uh, but they're selling fucking weed that's just, I think, what the fuck is it called? Like Delta 8? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which Delta doesn't eight. have any THC. It just has the CBC, which is legal to oh, sell. yeah. But... They're using the brand names. They had one that I think was called California Dreams. The other one, which, I mean, every, if you smoke, you know this name. Jack Herrera. Mm-hmm. Okay? But it's the fucking Delta 8 version of it. So you walk into the store, and they got these gigantic fucking jugs full of fucking bud. And idiots are buying it, I'm sure, thinking it's going to get them fucking high. And the only thing it's going to do is maybe make them tired. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, uh, provide some uh, much-needed relief to that gimpy elbow. Yeah, could do that too. <laughs> oh, it's I the, I was uh, it's high, the but now the, I can play tennis. It's the, <laughs> it's the Cloverfield of of drugs. <laughs> it just puts you right oh, to yeah. sleep. This Whether is fun. It to just makes me sleepy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Get you some Delta Eight. Well, watch some Cloverfield well, and have a nap. Why is uh, Why is TJ Miller here? <laughs> he thought yeah. it was weed too now he's pissed yeah, yeah. right he's <laughs> always pissed watch your back yeah. <laughs> that's his secret he's always angry yeah, yeah. watch your drugs when tj mo's around he'll get in there <laughs> <laughs> all right so getting into the movie first of all love the cold open that they do yes it's so disjarring it's like it really it's really it's one of the most off-putting fucking openings to any horror movie I think I've ever seen. Where you're just like, wait, what the what what the fuck? Yeah. What am I doing here? Just I watching. got the wrong movie, right? This is like <laughs> when you rent Fight Club on DVD and it starts oh, opening yeah. as the menu for Never Been Kissed. Yep. yep. And you're like, what? <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah, because we just we cut to uh, Slitter Slitterson. Sorry, that's a mouthful. And Hadley, <laughs> they're hanging out uh, just. Talking around the water cooler about what they're doing over the weekend. Wife put in some child proofing on the cabinets. He's like, ah, we should. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a couple of beers and go take that all down because. Well, yeah, it's, but, that's just a jinx, right? That's killing my sperm. Yeah, <laughs> she's already fucking counting the babies before they're hatched. Yeah, and uh, but we do set up that there is a possible situation because we just hear some chatter that Sweden went south. Ah, you can't trust them. Uh, so that just leaves True, Japan right? and had, America. Like, what, one good movie in the last 20 years? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Ingmar Berg who? The fuck that guy. <laughs> I, did love that, uh, his, I did love that his wife put the child safety locks on the top cabinets. Yeah. Uh, that which, was a nice. Which there was some good to, witty dialogue in there. <laughs> he won't be able to reach until he's 20. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then I do love the, the little – so they, they mentioned like, hey, look, man, Japan's had, got a perfect record. We haven't had a glitch since 1998. Now, this is debated in the horror circles on the internet. Yes, what please. This reference please, because this is something that drove me a little bit crazy too. Okay. To figure out what that reference was There to are be. three possibilities here. I'm going to float all three of them. Number one, they're referring to H2O where Michael Myers is definitively killed. Came out in ninety eight. It was the highest grossing mm. horror movie in ninety eight. Number two, other people say it was Godzilla, because that was a piece of shit that came out in ninety eight, which was disowned by Japan and America has tried to like. I don't know about that. Yeah, the but Matthew Godzilla Broderick doesn't vehicle? really die at the end because it's eggs. True. Mm. That was True. Roland Emmerich, right? That sure yeah. was. Yeah. Oh that God. <laughs> was very bad. What he made a trashy film. I know. Yeah, go figure. Go and see the, Moonfall, kids. 
<laughs> oh, God damn, no, don't. Uh, and the third and final possible reference here, and this is the one I'm leaning toward, because they referenced that the problem was caused by the chem department, okay. and this is a reference to the movie The Faculty, which came out in 98, has Deep all cut. of the archetypes that are in this movie. It's about an alien invasion that was thwarted by Josh Hartnett's drugs. Mm, wow. True. Okay. <sighs> The faculty was that Wes Craven? No, that was no. uh Who did that? Ah, uh, who the fuck was the it? Wasn't it? It's was Rodriguez. It was it was Robert Rodriguez. No. Yes. Absolutely yes. No, it, was. it was. Shut up, really? Yeah, totally. Wow. Wow. Shit. I'm pretty Me sure I mean go ahead and look here. it up, but I feel confident with no, that. No, no. I I think you're right. Sure. Yep. Directed by Robert Rodriguez, Boom. written by David Rector, Bruce Kimmel, and Kevin Williamson. Son of a bitch. Really? Interesting. Yeah. All right. If you haven't yeah. seen it in a while, go back. It's worth a uh, hungover Sunday watch, I'll say. I would say, you know, I think if anything, it has to be Halloween HTO because it's definitely the bigger of those three movies, right? So one that most people are going to get the, the deep, deep cut still. That's a deep cut just to say what happened in 98. And then but, you have Michael Myers who is supposedly, according to the new movies, and almost yeah. a top winner in our poll on the uh, the, bo- the bonus episode that we just did. Yeah, the tournament bracket, yep. Yeah. Almost pure evil personified, right? Almost. So killing yeah. evil personified, basically, is going to be a lot more than, eh, some teachers got fucked up. Eddie, can, I... you, read the, can you read the line again? <laughs> what was the exact line? Which line? That, that they're referring to, the, the, that we're talking about right now? Yes. So uh, what they were referring to was... <clears throat> That they ha- Japan had a perfect record, and we haven't had a glitch since 1998. See, I'm that thinking was... maybe it was a Japanese movie, since they said perfect record, glitch, meh, okay. Go and ahead. that was caused by the chemical department, the chem department. Hmm. That's why this whole movie he's riding the chem department. And remember, the, the thing that fucks them up and trips them up in this movie was the dude's drugs. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's also entirely possible it's a red herring, dude. I'm just, I'm just totally. throwing this out there. Yeah. I know it's not <laughs> no. as fun to consider and all, but like, oh, it's yeah, entirely yeah. possible. Yeah, it could be something. That, like, hey, you know what? You know how? Let's drive a bunch of fucking nerds crazy. Just throw yeah. a fucking reference in that has nothing at all to do. That nobody's ever going to be able to figure shit about. But. One of my favorite things to do on the internet is when people will put up a, a thing that's like, "What's your favorite movie quote?" Right? There's a you very Zapruder film. No, oh, wait, that's somebody else's bit. <laughs> That's a favorite film or something to be remade. No, quote. So there's a very famous movie quote is that's, uh, that's the beauty of it. Do- it doesn't do anything. Which sounds like it comes from a million movies, but it doesn't. True. So you just Holy pop shit, just that thinking, up. Why was they in Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah, yeah, that's one of them that gets thrown out there. Um, what was the other one? The, the Toys movie with Robin Williams, of all things. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory gets thrown out there. Not in any of them, though. Just a fun deep way throat. to troll people. Deep Throat? Mm. Yep, that's... Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was in Deep Throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, yeah. Well, they're, I just love that this fucking pothead has so many stashes. He's so fucking oh paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> that he has rules. multiple stashes. <laughs> I love him. So, yeah. Well, they, and, uh, like, and I don't know, like, how much, like, you know, jumping around and stuff we wanted to do. But, yeah, like, uh, I was kind of a little bit confused because at some uh, there's, a, like, a point later. And I know, you know, they don't need to spend, like, a ton of time justifying it. But there's this throwaway line or something where they're like, well, how come the, the, the stoner guy can find out where we are? And they're like, oh, he... Got his hands into some pot that wasn't treated, and yeah. it's it's working against it's the tainted inoculating pot. Inoculating him, and, yeah. And I was like, wait, what? Like regular weed <laughs> now is like an immunization against this tainted weed? I mean, like, what, again, well, that's not I'm why we're here, sure, but there's a logic fault. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw on the internet within like maybe the last year or so that people who smoke pot it was harder for them to get COVID nineteen than people. <laughs> who I thought of that too. That as well. I thought of that too. Yeah. I, when I watch this, and I want and I, to believe that, so it must be true. <laughs> yeah, very. No, good. I think they're just saying like that's look, the this... rules today, bro. By the way, if you want to of believe course, it's true, yes. that's all you need. Then I feel true. like it's true. If you Therefore say that it it's not true, you're hurting my feelings, and you're a fucking Hitler. <laughs> a Hitler, wow, <laughs> going out hard against people. It's no, an old sales it's trick. Action. It doesn't have to be true. It just has to sound true. Oh, yeah. clever. Gotcha. So, uh, no, I think they were saying something. I don't know. I kind of read it as like this guy's so high all the time that the drugs that they're working, he's like, oh, you're going to have to come stronger than that. 
You know? Oh, it's like that's, that's what edible. I thought they should have done. I thought <laughs> yeah, I thought it should have just yeah. been a thing of like, dude, this guy smokes so much weed that like yeah. even our super tainted ultra mega weed isn't doing anything. They giving him that G thirteen shit, man. Yeah, yeah. right. The G fifteen, yeah. right? It's it's the the Cheech and Chong bit of the like they smoke Cheech's weed, it's fucking nothing, and they smoke Chong's weed, and he's fucking dead. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got that Chong weed. So yeah, they. Uh, then we cut to, after them, you know, talking about all of this stuff, they sit down, bitch about the chem department, and we, we they have a little bit more small talk about the, the oh, you know, I, I, are you going to come over this weekend to help me take the things out of the cabinets and, and liberate them? The guy's just kind of drinking his coffee, and he's like, hey, are you even listening to me? And then, bam, cabin in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen Funny Games, but uh, yes. that yeah. that totally reminded me of the same title credits where it's just like silent, 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 and then all of a sudden, bam, with some like really abrasive music that's just like, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, see, that just reminded me again. Uh, the co-host who isn't here, Candace, yep. likes the fucking remake of that movie better than the original also. Mm. Oh, wow. Do you know, I, I, I've i never seen the remake. I've actually, Brian, I think I was talking to you about this some time ago. Yeah, we it's were. Like, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to see it just because I want to be able to – I don't speak I don't German and I'd like to be it, able though. to experience – but that's my thing. Like there's no reason that should, it should exist. If it's a shot-for-shot shot remake, yeah. the exact same fucking movie, it shouldn't exist. And if I watch it, I therefore give it credence for existing, which I don't want to do, and I'm torn. Mm. It's just what I don't get is it's just for stupid people who don't want to read subtitles. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I don't understand why Candace <laughs> likes that better than the original. <laughs> you think like she'd be like, uh, you know, actually, I learned some of the German so I can understand the film a little bit better. <laughs> he just well actually for Candace in her stead. Mm-hmm. Nice, man. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then we uh, cut to our uh, group of young people getting ready for a trip. But we're kind of like in being introduced to them, subverting the tropes a little bit. So you start with Dana, right? Mm-hmm. Who's supposed to be the virgin? Meanwhile, she was banging her teacher. I have to, I, I have to, because like I said, it's been a long time since I saw this. I have this written down. It's like, wait a second, don't tell me that she's that pathetic that she was like almost going to bang the fucking pr- professor, but the professor banged somebody else before he could bang her, and she found out about it. No, no, no. they uh, they were yeah, banging they did the deed, and then the teacher broke up with her via email. Which yeah. is a really classy Cause, move because there's also that scene because the comment also comes Dude. back at the very end yeah. when right yes, like, yes 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 we yeah, with the what director we yes. Yes. exactly but, yeah so. dude that's a bad fucking move if you're fucking a student you yeah. don't break up via email yeah you right? want a paper trail that's a <laughs> you real want, yeah, good fucking you want, move what's that thing WhatsApp where it's like fucking disappears in ten seconds no that stuff like that. never goes away Tim you want that's you want to have them in person screenshots motherfucker screenshots exactly Get you, you want to go someplace secluded have them there alone in person make sure they leave their cell phone at home mm-hmm. you know even at the cheesecake factory just down by the docks you know eddie's got a whole yeah, if it doesn't work this. out push her in the water there you go <laughs> uh then we got Kurt so the jock. That, that's why i use your uh you know your your manscape super deluxe edition so everybody just thinks they're uh fucking eddie the axe i just tell uh-huh. them yeah my name's eddie <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you just do with Nelson? You go scheme. smell me later? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I just use you guys as a pseudonym now. God for damn, all nobody, I've been getting so many hang-up calls lately, that's man. That's the thing, yeah. I'm just you out can, here burning bridges left look, and right I was going to say, man, you're you going to tear. If you laid off the name of Tim Yobo, more power to you. Exactly. You're just giving this... yourself a handicap at that point. Yeah. This is almost like an episode of Criminal Minds, see? Because all of the victims are going to point to Eddie because they of the smell of his balls. They all have the uh-huh. same exact <laughs> Port. That's and then right. twist at the uh, end. Ryan the whole time was making his yep. ball smell like Eddie's. Uh, it's double like twist a, though. It's like I a bad that. Scooby Doo episode, but with balls. <laughs> double the twist though. Massacre. <laughs> I love. The I love. Massacre. I love the image of you pulling off like a, a wrinkled scrotum to reveal an even wrinklier scrotum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it oh, was God. Ryan got away with the it. Whole if time. it wasn't for you, wrinkly scrotums. <laughs> uh, but double twist though. I'm going to go out and actually kill people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> then it's all. Like, well, he was framing me. See, yeah, that's just another one on his pile. Right. Oh, yep. do and he's going to do it with some yeah. shorn balls thanks to Manscaped. There you go. Yeah. I won't leave that's any... That's uh, Yobo goes to jail. 60 won't, days in for Yobo. I won't leave any hairs behind <laughs> so that the police can do the DNA trick on him. No, no, no. Mm, mm, yes. Not See, that's where the, that's where the nair on the balls will come in handy. Yeah. Nair on the balls? 
<laughs> no DNA. True. That's right. It gets rid of your fingerprints for your balls. Yeah. <laughs> gets rid of like the top two layers <laughs> of fucking print. skin. Yes. Yeah. So then we got Kirk. I, just I, in I and think if anything, I think you want some of the hairs on your balls to like kind of like you know cover up your ball print. It would be awesome if like there were you actually went into a precinct and they were just like actually like printing someone's balls, just like <laughs> a bunch of people lined up and they're grabbing them and just smashing them down I on ink and rolling them down on paper. That's that right. After 23 <laughs> seasons of fucking Law and Order SVU, they have not busted some fucking guy because he left a print of his balls on somebody's face. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's just like the teabag assassin it's, or yeah. something. The, the teabag tea swindler. <laughs> and the, oh, you it, tried it, to blindfold her? Okay. <laughs> oh, some kid on Counter-Strike was teabagging him. He figured out where the kid lived, killed him, and then teabagged him. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> Aha! Wait, get all these men uh, with their balls in a lineup, and we're going to try to pick out from the, the screenshot we got from the kid's webcam <laughs> whose balls yeah, these Yeah, let me tell you. Uh, one of the funniest fucking porn videos I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, God. Where this fucking guy, he was sitting on this fucking girl's chest, and he, we could figure out what was going on. And he takes his ball sack, and he literally stretches it over her entire fucking face. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just make, his, make his own little shroud of Turin with her face. Yeah. This was just like a... <laughs> oh, well, this just turned into a science Tim, fiction movie. You gotta quit watching the Fantastic Four porn parodies, man, I'm telling you. Oh, wow. Uh, so. Oh, the Fantastic Foursome. <laughs> hey <laughs> No, Hi, there's Roger a girl Corman, here, I swear. Of course, yeah. Uh, Roger so Corman. Then we got Kurt the Jock. Uh, who's stupid, maybe. No, he's smart. No, I'll say, yes, he's Again, smart. Again, fucking with it. Uh, Jules, yeah. the dumb blonde, even though she wasn't blonde, but she dyed her hair, and I love that the chem department puts shit in her blonde hair dye to make her stupid. <laughs> Very yeah, good This is some move. serious fucking pre-ground, pre, pre-fucking work, right? Yeah. They really had to lay down what the fucking plan was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been, they've been playing what this she went to, What did she want to go ever. red? That's Who true. Knows, yeah. dude. They should have. You know what they should have done? They should have had this whole like Ocean's Eleven like supplemental film where they just show all the heist leading up to it and all the work they did to plant this oh, shit. So yeah, they they long gamed the hell out of this stuff. So that's your behind the mask. Oh the rise of wait, Leslie hold Vernon. on a second. So she goes into Dwayne Reed. She buys fucking uh, red hair dye, and this little Asian guy who's a contortionist, <laughs> fucking gymnast, switches it out in her bag before she buys. There you go. It. Yes, done mm-hmm. exactly. A series of shit like that. <laughs> so then Marty pulls up and I immediately knew I'm like okay this is Tim's hero mm-hmm. massive I bong guy. I swear to god I, this is my fucking bong brother <laughs> massive bong that he folds up into a coffee mug it's uh, it's a real Chekhov's bong that we've got here Oh, yeah, see, it comes back over and over again, too. That's what's really great does. about it, man. There's so Shut many gr- That is, dude, when he fucking, like, just fucking ching that fucking thing. Oh, oh yeah. On. You fucking two pieces of zombie with a bong. I fucking love it, man. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, then there, it's the classic setup. All right, we're all going to go jump in this fucking Rambler. We're going to head out to my cousin's place that he just bought. It's this cabin in the woods. We've seen these people a billion fucking a times. A billion times. times, right? Yep, and they do all of the moves, so they drive off. And as they do, though, we see some G-man up on the fucking roof of the apartment complex radioing in. You're like, okay, all right. Yeah, Something and I do love on. the way that the film like kind of draws out a lot of that. Like, it's obviously you know when you've seen it uh, a number of times, you already know what's going on. But especially if you do happen to go in blind, they mm-hmm. really do a good job of not telling you what's going on up front, yeah. but leading up to it, and just sort of you know drawing that out until the reveal. You know, at the end of the first exactly. Episode. I was I was trying to pay more attention to that because like I've seen this a dozen times at least, yeah. and I know the first time I saw it, I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But I tried to look at it with the, the that kind of a critical eye to be like, "Did they really tip their hand early on this?" And they really nope. don't. I mean, no, they, they just give you little bits and pieces. Yeah. That I mean, if you're like a horror aficionado, like a fucking like uh, you know fucking OCD person, and yeah. you know everything there is to know about horror, you're like. Oh, wait a second. Okay, I know exactly what they're talking about with this reference. Oh, yeah. I know what they're talking about with that reference. But otherwise, like I said, you're just like fucking just like you don't know where you are with, with what's going on with this movie. Yeah. Especially you don't know where you are when you pull up to the creepiest gas station on Earth. 
with uh, the quintessential this... country store. It's in every yep. horror film. Mm-hmm. Exactly. With this jackass who calls Jules a whore, sp- spits his chew on the fucking ground in front of all of them. And, I mean, to be fair, like... Marty does kind of give him some extra shit, but then he justifies. He's like, well, you fucking are being a piece of shit to my yeah, friends. You're so to my friends, yeah. Eh, yeah. You get a little back for it. Yeah, so yeah. Get... I mean, you know, they, he, he sort of, uh, he drew first blood, the store owner, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. True. Definitely. Well, yeah, I also, I, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you caught this at all or anywhere, but like, I would love to know. I don't know if anyone knows if that was the um, same gas station from Duel, because we watched Duel recently and it looked awfully familiar. But I don't know. Hmm. The Dennis yeah. Weaver movie? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. yeah so I'm, like, I'm going to say that, that one was a little deep, more deep cut. No, yeah, yeah, I know. We we only know because we fucking did it on the show like a few months ago or something like that. But um, but yeah, just the where 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 he's talking to the woman and then the truck ends up coming through and like blasting it up and chasing him around. And there's like all those weird lizards and snakes and shit like that. I don't know. Like I said, it had a very similar vibe. Just I do love the the phone conversation when he calls uh, the the gas yeah, station that owner that we find out later. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Guy. so that, and he gets put yeah. on speakerphone. Yep, yeah. so I've definitely got that one to cover. But but for some yeah, reason, dude. it gave me flashbacks to the Last Jedi. Really, a yeah. little bit, a little bit. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Huh. I see that. I, I, I it didn't, but now that you're mentioning it, I by the way, it. Tim, that guy Mordecai, mm-hmm. he's a bloody buddy. He was on the uh, uh, Tales from the Crypt Demon Night. Oh, oh nice. there. Okay. He played uh, kind of a bit oh, part. I've seen he that played guy a million times. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a big time actor with a bunch of crazy shit. He he was Homer. He was the kid's dad uh, that that uh, Roach worked for. That ends up uh, down in the weird tunnel catacombs under the church uh, as a as a zombie or whatever the fuck those things are. Demons, I guess. Man, it oh, makes sense. No, it doesn't doesn't no, it doesn't ring a bell, dude. It's uh, been. Dude, another, I love that film so much, but I think dude, I need a rewatch because I'm. I do yeah, not, I don't remember that. Part. You're, you're do a rewatch, man. Billy Zane and that's fucking yeah, he's he's rushing. It's so fun. In that movie. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, and I and I love William Sadler, dude. I mean, Sadler's like, that, great. like yep. yeah, no, I mean, from yep. going back to Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, like he was the oh, best part of that movie yeah. is death. <laughs> and dead, then ever yeah. since then, I've just kind of like you know followed him around here, and then he'll just pop up, and anytime it's like ah, yeah. it's William Sadler. Has What's anybody up, seen the nice uh, BFW? No, seen it yet. No. No, I haven't. You haven't seen that, Eddie? Oh, no, God, no. Man. That's one of those one that I've got like 20 films people have recommended me. And I've still got to watch shit for the top of your list. For really? the sh- what? Put VFW over X? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, see? Exactly. Yeah, yeah we actually had that one in consideration. have three and a half hours to spare? Watch both uh. of them. <laughs> as soon as I yeah, get that three. Was, and- that was a movie we had in consideration that we bumped for some reason. So, got to hmm. go back to it. VFW? Yeah. Oh. That's a great well, fucking movie. Yeah. I'll have a whole month of not having to watch movies for the show, Tim. So I might have some That's spare true. time. Oh, God. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh, poor Tim. Really, we're Andy Coffey, Andy Kaufman, the whole fucking uh, all our fans. <laughs> see, we'll see who stands with us at the end of the month. Yep. Yep. That's this. this uh, I'm doing the Dark Souls of podcasts with all our listeners. So, uh, yeah, they they get done with the creepy guy that drive off. He gives them just enough gas to get to the cabin. But getting back, that's on you. Wait, and what are you guys doing with the podcast? You lost me there. Is there some sort of – is that like something being teased or is that no, been I, announced? I, I was talking about it. We're, we're not doing any movies next month on the main feed at all. We're going to be doing Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Oh, I, honestly, I thought you were joking. I, no. I thought that was just a bit I we were doing. I wish he was joking. Yes. Oh, no, shit. I am oh, okay. legitimately I doing that. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about fucking around <laughs> so much. Magic. It's like, I thought we were just fucking around. I wow. Yeah, use okay, magic. that's insane. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, no, you uh, might want to do a couple of uh, mini-reviews or something there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That You know what? That's a great idea. I'll do like a 10-minute movie review at the top of the podcast. <laughs> no, and in then the fucking D&D. In the middle of the podcast. Dude, oh, if you work that into the campaign... Oh, you should absolutely do that. Whoever is running the thing needs Me. to work that into the campaign where halfway through you all go like like at four distinct spots throughout the episodes. You guys go to the movies to watch a movie and do a mini oh review of that movie and then continue with the campaign. Yeah, that'd be great. I like how he says whoever is running that campaign like it's going to be yeah. me or Candace. No. <laughs> no. I, I, the other idea I had for Meta Month was that we should find a movie that multiple podcasts have covered – 
listen to the podcasts and then review the podcasts reviewing the movie. <laughs> As they review the movies, yes. Uh, uh, the was going to be, we were going to do Ape Real. It was going to be all movies based on like shit that really happened, but... Mm. No, nope. oh, I thought I thought I thought you were leaning into the ape part of that, and it was all going to be monkey movies. That's like every which yeah. way but loose. No, that's another podcast that's doing that, which I'll be. Doing the fucking <laughs> of course, Brooklyn Gorilla meets Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim, that was giving the best shit. Hey, dude, Duke I did Mitchell fucking... from fucking Massacre, uh, Mafia Massacre, and that is in that fucking yeah. movie. See, but Tim, you you get that? I got Max Payne. I'm so, going to take a Max uh, Payne over that fucking movie. Let me tell you. I don't know, man. I, I could shit on Marky Wahlberg in my sleep. <laughs> it's pretty easy. <laughs> he is a big target, man. That's for sure. See, but I'm, just, I'm worried that like Max Payne won't be like bad enough, right? It, like The fucking gorilla goes enough. ape shit wherever. Like, okay, that's, yeah, like there's going to yeah. be a lot of content there. But sometimes those bad movies aren't bad enough and they're just boring and that's the worst. Ah, we had fun with bullet Max Bullet time, Payne. man. Bullet time. Yeah. Oh, they have the bullet time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, well, and, that's all you had to say. Uh, there's supernatural shit going on in that movie, too. With the fucking <laughs> demons and shit. Oh, my God. Anyhow, uh, we get the really cool establishing shot, you know, that you always get in your horror movies with them driving through the woods. And mm-hmm. I, I love it. It just zooms out, though, to this just eagle hitting an invisible fucking yes. wall. Just <laughs> bam. <laughs> I'm written down, hey, it's a bird zapper. <laughs> it really so is. Yeah, it's, it's a really advanced UV lamp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really is, dude, because yeah, there's the sparks when the thing is. Just yeah. <laughs> like, God damn. So we get to the cabin, and uh, when we get in there, the, uh, two of the inhabitants uh, re- realize there's a two way mirror that is separating their room because first mm-hmm. goes in. And dude's like, oh, this painting is fucking creepy. Takes it down. (laughs) Two-way mirror. And he's looking in at our uh, star of the show, Dana, who's about to undress. And he has a little bit of... it's a good reveal because she's just standing there like a fucking, like a zombie almost for a second, right? Yeah, yeah. And starts undressing. And then he's like, a little conflict here. Do I let her know or do I maybe wait until tomorrow? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know... He yeah, ends up being the he's, he's a stand up. Give it dude. five minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, five, I'm saying I, I, might, I might have long played it a little bit or slow played it anyways, but you know, this is yeah. me. But, but, I would have uh, looked at my right shoulder, given a like five minutes of discussion, then looked at my left shoulder, given that so, one a couple of minutes of discussion, then make my decision. So, quick question. What, knowing what this movie is and knowing that everything that is placed in that cabin is placed there intentionally, mm-hmm. what do you think? is the purpose of that two-way mirror. Uh, I mean, even though they don't in this movie, I'm sure it has something to do... Well, they don't do it inside. I'm sure it has something to do with, like, teenagers fucking, right? Because that's, like, yeah, one of no, those Yeah, but no, wait, hold on. They tropes. need her to stay the way that she's supposed to be, right? So mm-hmm. why would they give this why would guy they that fate? extra yeah. temptation to try to make a move on her, right? But they unless also... she has to, unless he's supposed to make the move on her, right? Because he's yeah. seen her naked, and he's supposed to be the typical guy, and watch her get undressed, and like, oh, I gotta fuck that, and then he has to try, it, and then she has to turn him down, so she's really a virgin, and she's made so... the choice to be a virgin. Well, that does happen a little later, which is weird, but uh, yeah, so. Just my notes that I jotted down, I'm like, okay, it's, they put it here to increase the sexual tensions, uh, maybe foster distrust between the people that are in the cabin, or uh, maybe you show them something that's a little amiss in the cabin up front that's not necessarily, like, nefarious, but then gets them, like, hey, let's investigate this entire fucking cabin. No, because there's no reason that the people who are running this whole thing need to have that mirror in the room. There's nothing. That they, there's nothing. There's nothing like. Uh, oh, this is our secret room where we're watching everything that's yeah, going on. That's we're true. We're going to find out what, what you but, know the reveal later well, on. What's yeah. how they're seeing everything. Right. Let me ask you right. this real quick. Was it? Uh, and I don't remember. But like, was was there something about the one room that was more exposed than the other, where it was more about getting um, her into or out of one room or the other, and the other guy no, there to set things up? Not like that? really. No, no, because when they switch rooms, there's a whole thing at back of the main office about oh, there's been a switch in the plans. We have to, we have to, uh, f- yeah, we have to adjust the plan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like it's a big deal to them. They just mildly kind of adjust the plan. Um, 
I, I will say, like, probably from the, the filmmaker's perspective rather than in story, that it, it, d- it does set up a really interesting shot where, like you said, now the roles have reversed. So now she's watching him get undressed mm. and she has a little bit of a conflict. Like, I don't, I don't know. But by the way, though, in terms of logic, that, that like, it, what? So they, they switched rooms and then all of a sudden he immediately forgot that he <laughs> yeah, was Yeah, that's <laughs> right, yo. Like, that's no. right, yo. Holy shit. He's like, I know. That's a yep. fucking heavy painting because I picked that shit up. There's no way she's going to be able to do that quick. <laughs> quick, let me get my dick out. Yeah, he's yeah. doing a little advertising, Tim. I'm telling you. Uh, he's trying he to set up a Louis scenario. Louis C.K. with plausible deniability. Oh, God, damn. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought it was, right? It's like, well, hey, let's let's do this, and if she comes over, then great, and if not, hey, what yeah. do I know, you know? But it's just mm-hmm. over here what I love about what's That's right, because he doesn't put the picture back up before yeah. he leaves the room, yep, right? Yep. He's right. that, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. But she does. Chess. She does put the painting back up, and she's like, yeah, that's not going to work, and then hangs a fucking sheet over it, because she didn't want to see that shit. Yeah. But what I love that it sets up here, though, is then the, that shot then zooms out to the monitors that the people are watching. So yes. we were just watching people be voyeuristic with one another. Now we're watching another layer, which is a screen that you and I, the viewers, are watching voyeuristically that then zooms out to the people who are orchestrating this entire thing being voyeuristic. Yeah. So you get your layers of your meta being kind of applied here so I, I think in that it works i think it, it it's a little forced though as far as like the story goes having the two-way mirror in there but sets up a good shot yeah absolutely so we cut back to the facility and there's a new guy that's starting he's ex-military and helps them to get everything set up with monitoring the cabin situation we see there's cameras in all the rooms and this is when we find out that they drug jules hair dye dumb blonde <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. we get Mordecai's phone call. <laughs> this fucking scene is so great. Oh, man. Because he just calls them up there. and They found and, a uh, true believer, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're like, uh, first of all, the guy's like, uh, hey, sorry, Mordecai's on the phone. He wants to talk to you guys about something. <laughs> and they're like, fuck. Ah, no, no, no. Damn we're it. Out. Uh, this guy, tell, yeah, tell him we're not here. Like, yeah, no, no, he knows you're there, and he's really being creepy. Can you guys talk to him? He's like, all right, fine. Boop, puts him on there with the, with the, the. We should just call them the operators instead of their their names, Slitterson and Hol- and uh, Hadley. Weird fucking. Yeah, <laughs> which I don't think they refer to each other either. No, like no. Yeah, just the so let's say the operators, the two main operators. So they're. Uh, <clears throat> They, they get him on the phone, and they're like, so what's going on, buddy? It's like, and he goes into this speech. I got to find the quotes for it, man, because it's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's exactly like what, oh, here we are. Cleanse them. Cleanse the world of their ignorance and sin. Bathe them in the crimson of, and then he pauses. Am I on speakerphone? <laughs> Hadley. No, no, you're absolutely not on speakerphone. I, I can wouldn't... hear the echo. Yeah, yeah, I can hear the echo. It's like, oh, shoot, accident. Sorry about that, man. I, I Totally on accident. I'll, I'll uh, here, now, now you're back on speakerphone. It's like, oh, okay, good. Um, hmm. Don't, well, don't take this lightly. Uh, it wasn't all by your numbers. You see, the fool nearly derailed the invocation. Uh, with his insolence and the ancient one sees everything and they're not i'm still on speakerphone aren't i <laughs> they all just start fucking laughing at him oh my god i can't well, believe look, it's, it see, it's just what's great about the movie is because it just gives you these little glimpses of what's going on and it just yeah. immediately gets cut off so you don't get the whole right. thing you just get these little pieces of the puzzle yeah, yeah. So, and, well, and it's also fun anytime you have these sort of conceits where it's like, you know, some some big dramatic event and, you know, the people behind the scenes, right, whether they're gods or they're, you know, humans manipulating, whatever it is, right, where they sort of treat it like it's just their everyday job. And, yeah, you know, it's, it's well, just like it's, it's always a fun setup. Just, you know, the, sort at of the, the end of the day, let's not forget the show. they're government workers, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you got something to say for them? You know? Am I getting government paid overtime workers, for this shit? Do I get a fucking car ride home? <laughs> yeah, right. Even the er- even the intern brings that up. Like, who do I go yeah. to see about seeing if I get paid for today? Yeah, I'm an intern. I don't get overtime. <laughs> see, yeah. that, that, that's what got me. I was like, how does that security guy get that job? And how does that er- intern get that job? What's the build up for that? Right? Uh, the want ads, I think. 
They're like, you, we we're looking for government employees. You have to be all right with killing innocent people to, to appease uh, really evil uh, superpowers. But, I mean, you must need a pretty fucking high, like, Q-level uh, security, <laughs> security level clearance to get yeah. into the, being even a fucking intern. I yeah. did love Ronald. Uh, Ronald, the intern, won the bet as to who they were going to choose yeah. at the end. <laughs> no, but funny. he's got to with maintenance. So, yeah, yeah, maintenance yeah. So, and Ronald, the intern. He's like, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing that, that, that I love, though, with this, that, that they're setting up with this, you know, not taking Mordecai's warning seriously, is it's just their harbinger now, right? So he was supposed to be the harbinger for the group of teens that are going up to party and, mm-hmm. and being very obvious warning that shit's not going to go right. That's right, yeah. Now here he is warning the people at the facility and they're mm-hmm. just ignoring him. So it supports more your theory about like maybe these uh, two operators are the protagonists. Yeah. <sighs> so we go back to the, uh, well, the... They start taking the bets, like you were talking about. And the new guy asks a very valid question. He's like, look, if, if this whole thing is rigged, how can you bet on the outcome? He's like, well, okay. So we set up the situation. Then they have to, they have to transgress. So they have to screw up. And then they have to make a choice when they go into the basement. Still, they haven't tipped the hand of exactly what the choices are, any of that stuff. But back at the cabin... It's party time. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that's one of those things that um, uh, they kind of like a lot of films will do this where it's like, oh, you know, we they have this thing where they can't like, quote unquote, force the people to do these things. They have to like make the decision of their own yeah. free will. But like you kind of wonder, like, I mean, how much free will is there really in this right. whole experiment? Right. And that's kind of one of the things that I thought was interesting is it's just like. What is the moral code behind this? No, no, these no, guys, dude. You know? Here's what's happening: is this is th- there's a religion going on here, right? Yeah. Yep. They're cheating, just like every other religion <laughs> does. They're yeah, cheating yeah. with it. Okay. God didn't exactly spell out that I couldn't do this, so if I do it this way, yep. it's okay. You know, <laughs> you know how many Catholic girls ended up being a virgin on their wedding night, but took it up the ass for six years? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How many? What's the answer? Yeah, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> At least one that I know of. <laughs> yeah. By the way, my wife is a Buddhist. By the way, Tim went to Catholic school. Not so a Buddhist, to put a Buddhist. That, that'll hey. answer your question right there, buddy. <laughs> So, <laughs> hey, the soundboard made it. Um, What's that? I made it to the soundboard. I'm you did, good. sir. You yes. did. Moving on. So, up. and we've got the party, the truth or dare part. Of these people are in college. Is this still a thing? We still do truth I, see, or right, dare here's where I was out of high school. Confused because at this point, I still thought that the blonde mm-hmm. and the pothead were brother and sister almost, or related. Yeah, because then we find oh, out that really? they've made out. So maybe it is a role playing thing, Tim. Well, no, it's like it's one of those things because he doesn't fit in with this group unless no. he's related to somebody, right? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. he it's his van maybe. Yeah, and when he shows up, she's like the first one who runs up like, "Oh, always oh, doing it again." So shit like that. So I kind of had the the first time I was watching it, still yeah. up until this yeah. point again, I was like their brother and sister almost. I don't See, I'm, ever... I'm, I'm, I'm team Jason on this one. I think this whole thing is, the, you know, the government, because, I mean, they got an underground base. They got a maintenance department and chemicals. They're talking to other countries that are doing the same thing. This is a big dark web of conspiracy. Mm-hmm. It's fucking so QAnon, man. It doesn't, it, it's not lost on me that, that these kids have been groomed for this purpose. So the fact that they would have plants mm. in the class to bring these people together or mm. to like, you know, uh, true. Yeah. Look, look, there's, there's fucking high. This is the movie with the highest fucking stakes ever in a movie. Right. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The so, end of everything. It, you know, it's, it's and how does Japan get those world. fucking six year old kids to know what the fuck they're supposed to do? <laughs> right. Oh, the so nine-year-olds? the fact that they would, you know, plant yeah. these kids and, and create a, a scenario specifically custom tailored and designed to, to bring these uh, f- five or six kids into this moment together. Yeah, yeah because you, know, I mean, you need a certain type, yes. 
Right. I right. mean, Sh- Shaggy ain't hanging out with Daphne and Fred for no reason, you know? I mean, th- there's the... <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, too, Good point. still thinks he's going to fuck Daphne one day. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And he will, too. But, like, so there's two things, which is, first of all, though, when you're talking about horror movies, like, there usually is, the, you know, that one character or those two right. characters that don't really fit in, right? It's usually almost like there's always, like, a nebbish, nerdy guy, right? Yeah. Um, it was Elijah and... Wood and the faculty. Yeah, right, and they're always with, like, the football jock. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, none of us in high school ever saw the nerdiest kid in class hanging out with the most popular kid in class. That's not how social dynamics work, right? Um, No, not unless that kid is helping him with his homework or hand jobs. Yeah, but... um, Yeah, hand jobs, too. So I think that... Oh, days in, sorry. So I think that in terms of just, you know, having, like, the that character sort of not fit in well, again, you know, it's really just sort of playing into that motif. But yeah. just just to be clear here, so so do you guys think that this whole uh, operation and organization and everything is a part of the government or no? Well, they never overtly say that. Like, they even call out the military guy, like, look, you're not in the military anymore, buddy. This is a different zone down here. See, I think yeah, but the military and working for the government are two different things. You can be in the army you, and then you true. work for the government. It's not the same thing anymore, right? Yep, yep. That I mean, I suppose, true. but I, I mean, I still feel this is like sort of like a, a, a governmental agency. And if for no other reason than going back to what you said about it, sort of like being a satire on the fact that like everything fails, right? All yeah. of the different, all of it, quote unquote governments yeah, so of the mundane. world, if you will, yeah. Exactly. They they all fail, and that speaks very much to that like you know government inefficiency, right? Like yeah. good enough for government work, sort of thing, right? So, no, yep. because they've is, been good enough for how many years? This but is if, the this first is year, pri- this if this is private, that they fucked up. I'm telling you, if this is private sector, I feel like all those nationalities like nail it. Yeah, that's true. Plus, yeah, they're coordinating with all the other governments of the world too, exactly. because it's not just Japan, like. That's a, there's a lot oh, of other man, places fucking getting involved. Globalist fucking uh, ghost uh, ghost stoppers. Uh, yep, and they even knew that uh, Jules would get dared to make out with a wolf head. So that was a weird scene. Uh, yeah, this is the part where I was like, "Whoa, wait a second, bro! What the fuck are you asking your sister to do?" So I was like, "Whoa, yeah. maybe not." Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, then she does. So then Jules dares Dana to uh, well picks Dana to do a truth or dare. And they're all kind of giving Dana shit. Like, eh, she's just going to choose dare, then be a pussy about it, choose truth, let's skip to the... Right as they're talking shit, though, cellar door flies open. Man. Okay. <laughs> Evil dead. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so she's like, all right, fine, I dare you to go down there. And they uh, walk down. Uh, well, she, Dana, goes down into the uh, antique shop from Friday the 13th, the TV series. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was waiting. I was waiting for the fucking redhead to come out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Tim, your your redhead buddy there. By the way, uh, the the cabin was that the Evil Dead cabin? It looked, it looked very like to me, similar. Look, without yeah. the swing, it looked like the Evil Dead cabin. Yes. Yep. Because I'm just wondering and, uh, right now if maybe that was another meta thing that they did. Like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, the gas station was the gas station from Duel and that was so, the cabin from Evil Dead and that, that was the antique store? Like, On that point, Bruce Campbell was supposed to be in this movie. Mm. Oh, how? We'll get to that it's later, money. Tim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why wasn't but, he? Money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so now we're just going through and we're just touching all sorts of horror story knickknacks. We've got a jewelry box with a ballerina dancing. We've got a puzzle Genius. orb. Genius. Yeah, yes. yeah, a locket, conch shell, which the dude picks up. and Some kind of blo- puzzle ball. Yep, yep, Not a the box, puzzle ball. We from, can't get sued, but it's a puzzle ball. From Heck Razor. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Raisin Hades. But Dana picks up the diary and starts reading and they're off. All, wait, no, hold on, because you, you're on the selling. Because they're all, he almost opens up the puzzle ball, right? Yep. Yep. She almost puts on the fucking necklace from the fucking wedding dress, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The baller, the ballet dance is almost done in the music box. Yep. But she, as soon as she opens up her mouth and reads the diary, they put everything else down. That's it. Done. Yeah. Because we can't overcrowd this movie with, with uh, monsters. No, no. The yeah, last right. thing we need is more monsters, right, Tim? <laughs> nope. I think the last <laughs> no. thing the budget needs is more monsters. <laughs> Until the third act. Uh, so... <laughs> The, and I like Marty the whole time. He's like, guys, we should. Uh, I dare you to go back upstairs because this is a bad fucking bit, yep. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah, she's reading. The, the stoner is the only one that has the. 
I, you know, I, the, the, one of the, the reasons I love this movie is because this is the only time where the stoner is the fucking hero of a movie, right? right? He's the smartest person in the yeah. film. Yeah. And that never happens. Well, his paranoia is paying... Finally, I win. Paying it off, man. <laughs> so uh, then she starts reading, and it's this crazy account of this weird religious cannibalistic family from the fucking turn of the century talking about the dude having a, a lover or a husband's bulge and killing the mother and hollowing her out and stuffing coals in her body and cutting the arm off of the youngest. And you're like, wow, that's, that guy sounds like a jerk, <laughs> you know? So then they get to Latin. And we all know, never read Latin if you're in a horror movie. Never, not out loud. No. And of course... And yet, the, and yet these fucks always do it. Why? And she starts reading it a bit, and Marty's like, dude, don't. Don't read Latin. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but she's kind of like... And everybody besides Marty, of course, all, they all kind of seem like they're in a daze as they're about to finish whatever the thing is they're attempting to do, right? Yeah. It's also kind of weird that they didn't sort of like reverse the drug aspect of it, because it is weird that... Marty's apparently the one with the laced drugs, and he's the only one who seems to have any semblance of intellect around here. Like, it almost yeah. would have been, like, you know, if, maybe if they had, like, uh, you know, they put in some little uh, dispensers in the ground that released fog, and the fog had some, you know, dumbing effect or something. Like, well, you've got that outside with the pheromones. Yeah, right. that's true. They'd already do that with the pheromones. I guess and they couldn't double There is on something. They don't say what it is in the house. Oh, no. They said uh, uh, the, that they were going to deploy Thorazine on, on Marty when he was in the room by himself. So they do have that, and they did deploy something to Kurt when the, he's all like, we should stay together. And then they're like, oh, that's a bad idea. I mean, we should split up. <laughs> uh, so there is a little bit of that, yeah. But I don't know. It, it is kind of tough. The having the weed immunize him. I, I think. I think the read of it being like he's just such a heavyweight because he smokes yeah. so much fucking pot that, that it just doesn't so affect. Much better. Him. Yeah, yeah. Hindsight, I guess. So she reads the Latin though, and it reanimates a bunch of zombies, but not just zombies, because then. Accounting would have won. <laughs> no, she goes back at the lab. We find out that Yo, they're you're taking splitting fucking hairs here. You can make me cover the fucking spread. Because <laughs> yeah, back at the lab, we see that what they're betting on is which monster would be summoned, right? Yeah. And in this case, it's not zombies. It's zombie redneck torture family. So that's completely different. Yeah, zombies. which I don't know how completely different it is. It all, it all it almost sounds like it's like the. It's like the this world's equivalent of going up by one dollar in the showcase showdown in Price is Right. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you don't see too many zombie families in a movie, right? No, Zombies. I mean, really do they rare. stick together? Yeah, they could be. Yeah, depends where you are, right? If, if it's a uh, if it's early if it's early game and you know you're still going through the houses before you really know what's going on, then yes, you get the zombie family. Yeah. But by the end, by the time you know what's going down and everyone converges at the mall, then you're correct. Yeah, I guess if your family all turns into zombies and it's not a zombie apocalypse scenario, you got to stick yeah. together, right? Yeah. But then once it's what good zombies a... do stick together, exactly. Mm. So some other notable mentions from one of the most paused scenes in cinema history: uh, the board. We've got Kevin, which is a nod to Sin City. Angry molesting tree. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> Evil Dead. Yes. Deadites again, Evil Dead. And a few other ones, but, but, but we'll get to some of their, uh, their cameos later in the movie. And, and poor Hadley, he bet on Merman. Always man. bets on Merman. He's like, damn it. He had the conch, right? In his it's hand. a long he shot, almost... man. That's a fucking 90 to 1. That's the one that's going to fucking pay off, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you, if you hit on Merman, you're the only person who picked Merman. Well, yeah, because think about think about the uh, the handicap that you're giving yourself, right? It has to be somewhere near water. Well, yeah. they have the the lake there. Yeah, mm, that's true. But I, I guess, mean, you think merman moves faster in water than he does on land? Well, but Tim, if I put you in a weird room and there was like a weird puzzle box for you to fidget with, or a conch shell to to blow into, I think I could see you fidgeting with the puzzle box first. Yeah, trying to give me something to do with my hands since I don't smoke anymore. Yeah, I, absolutely, puzzle. I absolutely would go with the puzzle box, too. I was thinking about that, too. I was like, which one would I go to if I was down there? Puzzle box, absolutely. 
Yeah, I was curious what the uh, film reels were because that was the one thing Marty was going back toward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, see? and they they did say well, that the, all of the yeah, you kind of get like the found footage shit, right? Maybe okay. I was going to say maybe the ring, but that's what's going on in Japan. So yeah, uh, because we we see one. a cut to the uh, in Kyoto where we've got a, a full fledged Ringu situation going on <laughs> in this classroom. <laughs> It's just, and the, again, the, first the time watching this movie, you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, in... I'll, I'll do you guys one better. If you're asking me which one I'd pick, I wouldn't go down to that basement, period. Like, okay. Yeah, you know, that's a hard the question. Tea. Okay, so maybe that's I mean, a little bit. You're getting question. fucking fer- fer- pheromones shot into your fucking brain. Yeah, so you're okay. going to do something, right? So, so yeah, I th- guess. Th- let's, maybe let's that's how around. you stroll outside, though. Maybe that's why you stroll outside and then get to the lake, and then that's where all those lake ones come about, right? Yeah, well, that's where the merman gets you. Where merman comes up. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, I could do that. I'd definitely okay. be the first one to be killed by Merman. Yeah, Let's you're go like, ahead. fuck this. I'm going out for a stroll and then yeah. you know, so, get you outside. Yeah. How'd you climb up a fucking working. tree? Fuck Merman. Merman can't <laughs> climb up a fucking tree. So, Tim, who's getting you then, buddy? <sighs> yeah. I mean, those zombies, they don't, they don't give up, do they? But, I mean, you're, you're not reading that diary. Latin? You're not going to read Latin. No, I told you. I, definitely, no. I'd be doing the puzzle ball. Puzzle ball? Yeah. What about yeah. you, Jason? Yeah, same. Same puzzle ball, dude. Puzzle I'd go ball? right for it. I think so, too, man. None of the other stuff. Well, what am I going to put on the wedding dress or something? Yeah, like, exactly right. I mean, maybe. I like the puzzle ball because it kind of reminds me of that movie that I saw, Hellraiser. And uh, the Star Wars uh, cube that uh, Luke Skywalker fought in the, the first part of the movie. There you like, go. Or uh, BB-8, right, Tim? It's a ball, too. Uh, kind of. See, I, I'd look to my left and my right. I'd see these two hot chicks. I'd see Chris Hemsworth to my right. I'd see Kirkland Brand Taylor Lautner to my left. I'd realize yeah. I'm not getting anywhere tonight. <laughs> but I do have a buttload of weed in my room. So I'm going right. to like just see myself out okay. of this creep show uh, basement and, and go uh, do my thing. And that's where I get whacked by Merman when I'm out for a stroll smoking a doob <laughs> out by the lake, enjoying yeah. the scene. They're yeah. meanwhile being idiots, blowing a conch shell. They fuck me over royally. This merman oh. comes out of the lake. <laughs> I'm the first one to die. That's uh, my best story. How you do it is he turns a conch shell into a fucking bong and he smokes it. Oh, oh dude. Oh, man. <laughs> they really missed it there, man. Yeah. Jim smoking and weed they out end of up conch. smoking with merman. And merman's hella tight, it turns out. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's, got, he's got the best seaweed. <laughs> he's like blow 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 it into my blow it into my blow, blow hole blow the smoke oh. in my blow hole blow yeah, dude, oh man the turn... fucking blow hole on her man is incredible uh, <laughs> such a great move yeah tim you'd be smoking weed out of the merman yeah I you would literally you'd be like merman yeah. open your mouth oh and man no, i'm gonna he, suck no, it no, 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 you, you, you have a choice you gotta put you put the pot in the blow hole but do you smoke it from the mouth end or the ass end <laughs> Dealer's uh, choice. How hot, Dealer's how choice. How hot do you want that smoke to be? <laughs> if you don't want Dealer's it too hot, you're smoking from the ass. Yeah. <laughs> and either way, it's kind of like a steamroller, right? You just got to yeah. plug yeah. one end, and then you kind of release it like a carburetor. Like yeah, you pull the carb on the blowhole. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you pull the carb on his ass, and you suck oh, it through his that, mouth. Oh, that's right. That's the carb. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah oh, that shit. would be the carb. Sorry. What so if there was an incentive? Joke. What if there was an incentive to go for the ass? He's like, oh no! When it travels through the large intestine, it gets extra stony. <laughs> They like, oh. well, not only that, but yeah, but well, now I have to go tests ass. are usually like, curled and all that shit. So by the time it gets here, get it out of the ass. It's extra cool, so you can take an extra big hit. Oh, go. okay, <laughs> like ice in the bong. I, I dig it, man. That's good. Yeah, it's like you have the bongs where so, it's got like all the fucking S joints in it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, True good arts out there listening right now, like, damn it, I left so much on the table. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm glad we covered how you could smoke weed out of the merman and cabin in the woods. <laughs> he's, I like, mean, <laughs> he's like, where were you guys in the meeting? I pitched this. I got shot down by everybody. Uh, we were working with Bruce Campbell. We couldn't make it. Uh, lighthouse so, show, the lighthouse showed us how we could fuck a mermaid, so oh yeah, might as well God, yeah. dude. smoke weed out of a merman. So Love did uh, The Shape of Water. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. true. That's true. You guys still never <sighs> seen that movie? Is it worth it? I haven't seen Shape of uh, Water, no. Eh, I mean, she fucks eh. a fish, so. I mean, you know, if, if I want to see a girl fuck a fish, I can see a girl fuck a fish. I don't need to go yeah. to Shape of Water. I got time. 
<laughs> I've got <Yeah>. connections, bro. <laughs> I can make that happen. You know? <laughs> I don't need uh, to lower myself to, to those standards so, to see to that. watch an Oscar-winning movie. I don't need no. two and a half hours in a yeah. multiplex to do that, dude. Yeah. Hey, $200, I go uh, head down to Sunset, you know, about 2, 3 a.m., I, I can make that happen. So now, when you go down to the donkey show tent, in the back there's a smaller tent. Okay, go see Raphael. <laughs> yeah. It's not in the tent; it's in a tank. <laughs> right, right. It's at the marina in Tijuana. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Nah, so back in the cabin, Marty's like, "All right, y'all are stupid. Jules is acting like some bimbo. She's not." Kurt's acting like some alpha male idiot. He's a sociology major. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his Calling his friend Egghead, even though he, he yeah. kind of does look like an egghead with that head. Kind of does, yeah. yeah. He's like, no, there, there's like puppeteers, man. And she, she's like, puppeteers? He's like, Pop-Tarts? I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. He's a stoner. We get it. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's where I so, kind of thought they were going to like start really leaning into that like dumb stoner, but it's like, yeah, he's he's guy saves the world at the end of the day, or could have. Well, he I don't know about saving. The world. <laughs> Fuck that. Was shit. in Let's position the too. <laughs> so that, yeah. So then, yeah, Jules and Kurt hit the woods to bone, and Jules isn't feeling it. She's like, ah, it's too cold. So the people at the facility just like crank the thermostat a little bit, mm-hmm. and she's like, ah, I don't know. Right, we crank the pheromone. I don't want most of my bit. pussy. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know why it sounds so pleasant when you put it I don't know way. how you get rid of the moss, uh, Tim, but uh, I guess maybe, I don't know, you just have a zombie run by real quick and rip the moss up. You need up. some womanscape? Ah, there you go. <laughs> uh, you need no, some antibiotic at that point, bro. It's not, but the, it's not the angry uh, rape tree, though, so I think she'll be safe in the woods with her pussy, Tim. Uh, so. So then they're like, ah, it's too dark. And then they hit the lights on the moon a little bit. Like, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Make it more like romantic, that. right? Yeah, Come yeah. on. So then they're it's like, fun to uh, fuck in the moonlight. All right, time to start fucking. But uh, we definitely need to see some boobs. Mm-hmm. And back at the facility, <sighs> dude's like, well, does it matter to, to see some boobs, Tim? Yes, it matters. It's a horror film. How the hell are you going to uh, jump us out of boobs? It's like yeah, I know. That's the reason I'm here. Exactly, Tim. I mean... Uh, if I'm an that's... ancient one and I don't see tits, I'm pissed. If you don't see... Tits! Tits, 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 tits. That's how. <laughs> you guys are new to the show. That that's what on if, like, the, ancient uh... one tits, though, look, like, completely different? Like, your, your mind can't Dude, even process that, No, see, that's the point, man. You've yeah. seen ancient one's tits and how they're fucking drooping. All the way down, <laughs> seven fucking lit knees by now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, any comments? Uh, yeah, it does matter because we're not the only ones watching. Tim's watching, and he wants to see her boobs. Yeah. So they get the. <laughs> That's fucking... exactly what I'm thinking. Like I paid my money, motherfuckers. Come on. <laughs> Three uh, of these fifteen dollars for for the next seven seconds. Make it count. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, it's almost like we're the ancient ones watching this. Hmm. <laughs> At least we, yes. Interesting. So they get to fucking, and uh, oh shit, zombie attack. We get a big knife through her hand. Then, I, I got to admit, I still love the bear trap on a chain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's it's in my notes. That's a specialty, isn't it? That's- yeah. Yeah, that was a good went to a fucking mood, a fucking Zen fucking monk to teach you how to use fucking bad trap on a, tra- a chain. Yeah, that was some thirty six chambers of Shaolin shit right there. I like oh, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you think nunchucks are hard? Try that shit. That's a thirty seven yeah. chamber. That's the thirty seven <laughs> chamber. On the plus side, though, man, like most of the time it doesn't even clamp people. It just fucking knocks them in the head with this big yeah, chunk true. of metal. Yeah. So I mean, because that's what happens here is. Uh, Zombie, you know, tosses it, clunks him in the head, then runs over, picks up uh, Jules, and, uh, well, they get an old-timey saw and just saw her fucking throat. Uh, Man, the fucking rust on that shit. She's going to get blood poisoning. She's going to get tetanus. (laughs) That's right. She's definitely going to need a tetanus shot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And then, I mean, so they had they, a new head, but also a tetanus shot. <laughs> true, true. So, uh, yeah, then we see the uh, facility people flip a switch, a glass breaks, and blood pours onto this carving. But we don't see what the carving is at all. It's, it's very close up here. But as, 
as we persist through the movie, though, and we see more killings happen, it's a little more zoomed out, and we kind of establish that they're, I don't know. Here's a question. Is yeah. Whose blood is that supposed to be? Not just anybody's blood. It can't yeah. be their blood. No, no, of course not. I think it's just like a symbol or a, to, to tell the ancient ones, like, all right, this one's done. Yeah, they just oh, tapped see, into the I thought it was their blood. blood. I think they just I, into the when blood I, you would logically think that it's their blood, but when you think about it, it's how are they going to get the blood out of the ground where it happens with the mm-hmm. bad trap with all the other shit? So whose blood is that supposed to be? Again, they're cheating because it's a religion, right? Yeah. Okay. Wink, yeah. wink, nudge, nudge. God <laughs> says don't eat fish Tim. on Sunday, so I'm going to eat white fish because no, it's Tim. not really a fish. Or I'm going to have a Subway tuna fish sandwich where it's not really tuna. Tim, have That's you ever true. made a... Always, uh, always looking for a loophole. Always looking for a loophole. Yeah. Tim, have you ever made a waffle? Uh, no, not personally. Okay. Well, really? when you make waffles with a waffle maker, they got a little light on them that tells yeah. you when it's ready. I think that's what the blood is on these symbols here, is they're just telling <laughs> the guy down there, like, waffle's ready, we killed this one. <laughs> I, so don't know. I think it's kind of, again, I think it's a little bit of a cheat that they're, pl- yeah. they're playing. They're playing fast and loose because again, like they said, is in the beginning is you know we can't force them to do it. They have to want yeah. to do it. But what are they doing? They're chemically mm-hmm. and you know doing other means to get them into these situations where they're making them make these decisions yeah, they're, they're that cheating. they might not make on their own. Yeah, they're cheating the system. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Tim. They put them in these impossible situations, right? It's one of those things where it's like, uh, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going to chain you up here to this yeah. thing and leave a saw to uh, cut off your leg or you can starve, you know? And then you cut off your leg and you go back and it's like, dude, why'd you do that? You had options. Like, well, no, yeah. I really didn't. Well, you, uh, dude, and you, to your you point about your it own. not being their blood, um, when uh, the fool dies. Um, they, the don't blood they fills will, up, yes. The blood fills up, but then we find out he didn't mm. die. So yes. that's yeah, not so it has to be blood. Oh, right. so again, Wait a isn't it supposed to be that is supposed to be the blood of a fool? That's supposed to be the blood of a virgin. That's supposed to be the blood of an athlete. Yeah. That's supposed to be the blood right. of a whatever, what, what the, whatever the fucking other guy is. Uh, uh, the uh, nerd, the smart and, yeah. guy, yeah, the nerd. Yeah. Well, in, so, in, in keeping with that whole thing, I mean, the whole, you know, the sacrament, right? The, the wine is the blood of Christ. Yeah. So, you know, right, right. But I is it one of those symbolic... things where maybe they're just going out and they're killing a fucking eight-year-old girl because she's a virgin they're using that <laughs> yeah. blood? They're killing a 15-year-old th- well, guy who's a oh, fucking you know what, math though? genius because he's a smart guy? L- like you said, though, maybe the, how how you said maybe they forced this group of people to become friends via, like, social pressure and this is, like, a long game. You don't know. Maybe when these guys are in the hospital... They're just like, eh, take a little extra blood out of them. There you go. Wow. Yeah. There you oh, go. Shit. Dude. Or maybe they've a, donated that's blood. That's some fucking QAnon yeah. level shit. Dude, you know what? <laughs> maybe bank. it's just kind of like going around and, uh, you know, selling Girl Scout cookies or collecting donations. They're just like, all right, drop some blood, everybody. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the pool. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Dave, oh, no, no, go don't go on your break, Dave. Blood. We'll see you. Get, out, get over here. You two with the blood. Yeah, that's what the interns are for, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, you're stupid. Give us your blood. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna donate any fucking blood for the fool. Yeah, <laughs> no, you, Tim. We all know whose blood you're donating. Yeah, the fool. <laughs> I like uh, how the uh, the thing they had look kind of looked like a bong that could be uh, you know pulled out all the way. Yeah, a cup the cup that he the, the chalice. Yeah. So yeah, then uh, we go back to the cabin. We see Marty's in bed and he's reading some Little Nemo. And he just hears a whisper that's like, go for a walk. And he's like, what? <laughs> go, go for a walk. It's like, I'm not a fucking puppet, man. I'm not going to do what you're telling me, you son of a bitch. I just want some fucking bath salts? What the fuck? It's like, yeah. uh, I'm going to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> so he runs into uh, Kurt getting chased by a zombie. Sorry, a uh, zombie redneck torture family member. Thank you. Yes. Come yes. on. Uh, yeah, that's that's their chosen pronouns, uh, and they barricade. They, 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 he's like, "Get back in the fucking cabin." There's zombies, so it's like, "All right, we're gonna barricade ourselves in." But somebody's knocking at the door. It's like, "Well, it might be Jules." We open the door. The zombie no, they're would... busting down that fucking door. That's Jules. Jules is on yeah. fucking steroids. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's Jules. But no, it's a big fucking zombie who just chucks Jules' head into her. Like, here you go. Hey, her, her hair's not blonde anymore. Yeah, that's right. She goes back to being a she almost, she, now she's a redhead. Yeah. 
It's like so, all those pheromones drained out because she did the banging. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> then uh, that, they were like, all right, the plan is we're going to board the cabin up. We're going to all stick together. And then this is when they shh the chemical out. And he's like, you know what? Actually, let's all split up. We can cover more ground that way. <laughs> <laughs> so what chemical is that that they spray? The, I Stupid? don't know. Uh, it's something to make him be more alpha. I think it's whatever Joe Rogan sells on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Because it doesn't work on Marty. He's like, what? What the fuck? What are you, what are you talking about? That's a terrible idea. Doesn't matter. They split up, go into separate rooms. People throw the switch and lock them all in individual rooms. Yeah, because something happens and Chris Hemsworth goes, everybody to your rooms. Yeah. And they all go to their rooms. Like, what the fuck? I'd be like, I'm going to get out of here. There's a car. You know? <laughs> like, let's do that move. So, uh, <clears throat> this is when Marty knocks over the lamp. And he finds a camera. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, shit. All of my weird paranoia is real. <laughs> yeah, which, by the way, anybody who uses, uses Airbnb, check for cameras. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, case, Thanks for the in warning, In case Airbnb Tim. wants to sponsor us and pay me not to tell people not to check for cameras. Gotcha. Hey. Gotcha. Good point. Yeah, you also got to make sure those Alexas are unplugged. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Just don't trust anything. Kill all the electricity in your house. Get rid of the internet. Go move out into uh, an abandoned <laughs> missile silo somewhere in the middle of America. Uh, trust me. Trust me. And within the next two years, there's going to be a Netflix fucking special crime documentary about some fucking guy who's putting cameras in Airbnbs. I'm sure. Without a doubt, for sure. So um, they're all like, shit, pump the Thorazine in there. We got to, you know, take this kid out because he's fucking on to us. But then they're like, oh, no, then- fucking Thorazine. That's a fucking, that's an escalation. <laughs> I, that's what they said, dude. <laughs> they're going to just fucking poison him. Like... Like, oh, no, never mind. Uh, the zombie's coming. He'll take care of him. So zombie reaches in, grabs him, pulls him out of there. Dude telescopes out his bong, knocks the zombie with it once. It's such a great scene the way he fucking scopes it out to him, man. <laughs> it is it's good, like, yeah. What the fucking, what, what's the fucking thing that the cops use? The yeah, riot katana? baton. Oh, yeah. yeah. Katana. Uh-huh. Katana? I hope the cops aren't it's using a samurai katanas. sword, dude. You have awesome cops over there. It's samurai cops. walking cop around with guns. You never yeah. saw that movie? No, I saw Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, though. Was it, was it him? <laughs> you saw Sergeant Bukaki? That was a different movie. No, no. That, that was a short film. I worked on it, but I, didn't, I haven't watched it. But, uh, <laughs> Is that the one with Dick Cage? Yeah. Ed Bukaki? <laughs> No, it's, it's a riot baton. It's not a katana. Yeah, Bukaki Dangerous. That was the movie he was in, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Marty still if gets you're the best. Enough cock. <laughs> the zombie still gets the best out of Marty, though, and then stabs him in the back, and then drags him away. And this is like you said. They 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 they're like, all right, well, he's definitely dead. He died off screen. So they throw the switch, the blood seeps into the fool tarot card constellation looking thing. And this time there's an earthquake. So something might have went do, wrong. And mm-hmm. I do feel like a lot of that too is just, you know, some of these things are, I'm sure, work within the context of the screenplay and the story and the world. But I do think a lot of these things are just sort of little one off uh uh you know, sort of uh, homages to some of the different tropes that we've seen in horror oh, yeah. movies, right? Obviously. So, like, one of the things is, yeah, you know, there's always the guy who gets killed off screen and then, like, comes back at the end to, like, save the day, yeah. you know? So, mm-hmm. I think there's just If a lot you of don't see them like killed, they're not dead, right? Exactly. exactly. Yep. Yep. That's a rule that's right up there with the double tap, Tim. If you don't see them dead, they're not dead. Mm-hmm. So, Dana and Holden go hide in the basement, trying to look for a way out. And they're in the black room, which is where the father, the patriarch of the weird zombie family, mm-hmm. apparently killed everybody. And uh, D- Dana's all like, oh, he's going to fucking kill us in here. Holden's like, nah, don't worry, man. I, I got it. We'll-, we'll just find a door and get And right as he's saying, that bear trap comes fucking dropping down and clamps <laughs> onto his ass. And then Dana fucking hulks up, though, because she spears the zombie to the fucking wall, cuts the shit out of it. And they, they go to make their escape because uh, Kurt pops open the door and is like, hey, here's the way out, guys. 
But the little move of the operators hitting a switch to make the knife she's holding shock her, so she drops the knife. Because I'm always like in these fucking horror movies, why are you dropping the knife? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd be gathering more knives. Dude, so. I, I the the one thing the movie I always think about when people bring that up, I think like the most egregious offense is in the very first Final Destination, where uh, the woman's drinking the water in the kitchen and she like fills her glass and she goes to drink it and all of a sudden just goes ah and like throws it on the ground to like set up being electrocuted later or something and it was like there was no sound oh. there was no nothing <laughs> like where to assume this woman just spasmed while drinking water and like dropped it all over the place that's what's what great about this movie it fixes every problem that's ever been in any other horror movie right? <laughs> I mean yeah in its own way there you go that just explained it to you man the, the nice. glass of water shocked her yeah, exactly. There was there was the two guys behind the scenes doing yep. it the whole time. So, yeah, <laughs> a young Richard Jenkins and Bradley Gilford. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So uh, <clears throat> they escape. They're like, all right, we're going to get in the car. We're going to drive the fuck out of here in the camper. You know, because uh, this whole situation's fucked. And as they're trying to escape, we cut to Japan. Where these nine year olds have all like they're all holding hands and they've got like a bucket full of flowers and they're singing. There's some this, lotus flowers in the pot. Yeah, yes. as this stupid fucking zombie or ghost girl gets sucked into the, the bucket and turns into a they're happy praying little... to Shinto, whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. All I know is I think it's turned into like a frog, and it's great. And they're like, "Oh, it's, a, it's a happy, happy little frog. tree frog." That means yes. <laughs> it's like yeah. so funny. They're like, "Well, we've we've turned the evil spirit into a happy frog that'll smile." Yay! And it's also and, just that juxtaposition, right? Because it's coming on the heels of like all this, like you know, yeah. hyper violence happening back in the cabin, and people getting cut up and smashed, really? and this and that. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, here's some like six year old Japanese girl singing a happy song. And then zooming out from that and the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Richard Jenkins. Richard fuck Jenkins. you! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! Pointing That's... at each little girl's face on the screen. <laughs> fuck huh? you, fuck you, fuck you! <laughs> Zero fucking fatalities. A total wash. <laughs> and then we see what happened in the other locations very briefly. I had to slow motion this one. First one, you uh, yeah, because one of them has like it looks like a fire thing going on, right? One looks like kind of like a yeah. Godzilla thing, right? Okay, so you've got Stockholm, which is the thing. It's the helicopter flying out above the. Uh, oh, it's uh, a ice. fucking remake. Yep. <laughs> which I bet can you know, Candace, if you fucking like the remake of the thing better than the original thing, fuck you, you're off the show. <laughs> Damn. Uh, then we've got Buenos Aires, which is King Kong. But not yeah. King Kong because it's got like horns on it. Fucking weird looking. And then yeah, Madrid, and it's it's like a castle that's on fire. And I think that is supposed to look like the old Hammer Dracula. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay, know. yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah. We we kind of you know paused this a bunch and and uh, yeah. Because what was get... that Spanish movie that we did a couple months ago? Uh, Wreck. No, not, uh, I mean the Italian one where the the fucking the zombies were riding the horses, like uh, oh Planet yeah, of the Tombs Apes. of the Blind Dead. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, it looked like it could have been that too. Yeah, that play that was a fun movie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, the the operators are all freaking out, and they figured out that it's because the pot that they dosed didn't work, like we were saying. So because he had as... a secret, 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 secret stash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. Like every self-respecting stoner. In case the cops find the first 10 <laughs> ounces, I have that extra one, uh, one ounce hidden away. It's the exactly. stoner equivalent of a Derringer back in cowboy times. You always got it hidden. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, here's what I love about this movie, okay? Again, because the pothead is the hero. He figures it out. And this motherfucker, he comes prepared. Because he has that fucking telescoping fucking bong, right? Mm -hmm. Then he's smoking blunts. Then this motherfucker has a little wooden pipe that he's smoking yeah. in the bedroom all by himself, too, right? The dude had everything set up, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like I once you... love this dude. <laughs> I feel like once you get the telescoping bong, like, that's a commitment. Like, Tim, you've got your volcano. 
Yes. Are you going to cheat I, on I your volcano? Bong, I haven't broke the bong out in a long, long time because it, it makes me cough, and the volcano doesn't make me cough, but go ahead. Okay, okay. I well, do yeah. also want to just say, though, do you guys think that, like, with the telescoping coffee cup bong, that it almost kind of has, like, a, a you can make it have, like, a gravity bong effect? I, yeah, you I was... Stretch it out, fill the whole chamber, and then just I was thinking about that, together. actually. Well, the one that I saw on the internet is you can actually fill it up with coffee. And still, <laughs> just use jam it as all the fucking coffee bomb, it. right? Which I'm holy thinking, well, sh- holy shit, smoking some fucking sativa, g- filtering it through fucking coffee? That's got to be an extra <laughs> hit. Oh, you want to make sure you get iced coffee then, Tim. True, yes, you can Smooth make an extra that. big hit. Yeah. 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 That, 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 you know, at that point, you might as well just chase your Dayquil with NyQuil and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, do the old Walgreens speedball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a fun one. So, <laughs> oh man, it's gonna make me want a bad hamburger and go beat somebody up who's not white. <laughs> <laughs> and isolate that clip right <laughs> It's a Walmart. Walburger, Tim. Yeah, you're gonna be blinding a Vietnamese man, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and getting away with it too. Twenty seven. Yeah, no, dude, hey, if you can make people yeah. money, dude, they will hide your transgressions for you for sure. True, true. <laughs> yep. So okay, then then we find out that demolitions failed because there was a glitch because they have not sealed off the fucking tunnel they came in. Yeah, because they didn't get the order from upstairs. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Again, going so, back to all these government inefficiencies, just want to keep pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now it's a race against time, right? Because they're r- rushing toward the uh, the tunnel, and we've got to figure out what what's going on. And we even have the fumbling with the wires underneath mm-hmm. the table. That, I mean, it's great. They hit it though, right on time. Boom! Tunnel blows up. The group has to reverse out of the tunnel as it's collapsing in front of them. Which good shot, fun, builds a lot yeah. of fucking tension. But oh. they're backing into. You know, zombie family, so that sucks. All right, plan B. We're going to jump the lake on a bike, Evil Knievel style. <laughs> this was my biggest <sighs> laugh of the movie, by the way. I love that moment. I yeah, totally forgot about it. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm not a physics guy. I don't think he was going to make that jump. No. <laughs> Dude, you got to do something. You got to put some kind of like fucking ramp up there, right? You yeah. You don't just fucking jump and like all of a sudden just go up in the air. No. You have. Gravity, right. You would right? just go straight and then down. You're not going to jump off without a ramp. That's what ramps are for. <laughs> but th- th- this this brings us to a part in the movie where I'll kind of jump in and say that there, there are two things that I think this movie does uh, perfectly. Mm-hmm. And the first is the high wire act of balancing the tone of the film, which yes. we've talked about. Yeah. The uh, the back and forth between the comedy and the horror, the intensity of the kids in the woods and then bouncing back and forth to the – because that could be really jostling. And that could be also mm-hmm. very easy – that very easily could not have worked. And then you've also yeah. got the extraneous elements of the other countries and all of that. So, uh, yeah, that was a, a very delicate you know, surgical procedure that I think they just did flawlessly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the second thing, uh, which is this moment right here, is the plant and payoff. Like you said earlier with Chekhov's bomb. Um, Mm -hmm. I like that you put it that way. Everything (laughs) they show you in the front half of the film comes Mm -hmm. back and has a role in the second half. So right here, they showed you the eagle flying into that wall, Mm -hmm. laser Mm -hmm. wall. And you had no idea why they were showing you that other than that they were going into some shit. And you were like, okay, this is ominous. Uh, But then with Hemsworth now flying into that wall, (laughs) it it comes up with Merman, with Whitford taking the bet and the uh, thing Mm -hmm. and being disappointed. Oh, Merman's the best payoff in the whole fucking movie. Right. Absolutely. Every single thing uh, that they do in the beginning of the film finds its way into the end of the film. And you could just go right down the list, and it's just clockwork. It seems like a very... uh, uh, methodical way to write a script because you're like okay let's put this in here we'll pay it off there put this in here but it's a and fun why did, way to watch why did 98 fuck up because chemical why is it fucking up now because yeah. of chemical yeah right it's a very fun way to watch a movie because it rewards you for paying attention to these little details that kind of come through and and even in the background with some of the uh, little bits of dialogue um i thought they just it was such a rewarding thing uh, all the way to the bitter end anyway oh totally totally and there's a lot i'm not even pointing out like if you look at the board, which team, which uh, groups bet on which monster, there's oh, like little... Oh, yeah, I pause on that too, yeah. Yeah, there's little Easter eggs of, of, of jokes in there. Like, of course, accounting okay. would bet on these guys, and it's... 
Yeah, there's a ton of that kind of stuff. There's a big wiki actually for this movie with a ton of that stuff being called out. I just It's just it seems like my my overall experience from this film is just Drew Goddard and, and the one who shall not be named. Uh, mm-hmm. We're having a fun time writing yeah. this and making this film. These kids were all having fun out there uh, in the woods. Um, the makeup department were going bananas with everything. I just it, yeah. you could see and feel the joy that was coming off of the screen and off of the page. Um, oh yeah, I mean it uh, makes all the, the entire... homages and all of it. That yeah, makes the whole. I didn't experience. need to get on a tangent. But, no, that's uh, fine. It makes the, the uh, whole experience of watching this film just is so enjoy. Even little like things, like when he slams into the wall when he's jumping it, he doesn't just like slam into it and fall. Oh man, he keeps fucking no. hitting it all yeah. the way down. Dude, he's <laughs> feeling that shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the sound effects too. You keep oh. hearing the clink, oh. clink, yeah, and it just it is sparks a, shooting a, out a goofy time. moment. Yahoo, hoo, 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 so all the way good. down. I love yeah. it, and, 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 and the immediate. Sound up too. I mean, that's definitely like you know a traditional joke setup punchline, right? Like, of course, yeah. Into, you know, like don't 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 ease up. I never do. Yeah. Right? Like, just, <laughs> he gives such a whole, perfect should have eased moment. up, motherfucker. He gives his <laughs> right. whole stupid hero speech about I'm going to yeah. make it over there, and if I don't make it over there, I'm going to crawl over there, and yeah. I'm going to come back with the army come and guns. guns. Yeah, I'm going to have guns. guns. Yeah. Yeah. And just the <laughs> impotence of him just slamming into a wall, not even halfway <laughs> across. It's so perfect. I man. believe too. I think there, and I could be wrong here, but I believe there's a sound cue where uh, the music is really triumphant and yep. then all of a sudden as soon as he hits that wall that the sound drops out all together yeah. so it's like the, the sound <laughs> even steals a, your thunder away you know yeah. what I mean it like, leaves you there in the void no and all like to Jason's intended, point huh? You yeah. just really yeah. fall down. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I forget if it was that moment, but I think it might have even, like, gone really sinister with the music, which kind of... Because I remember yes. thinking, like, oh, wow, that's funny. Like, they went from triumphant, they had this moment which made me laugh, at which point the music kicked in and got, like, serious and evil. So there was, like, a lot yeah. going on in these, yeah. like, five seconds. Immediately right. when that <laughs> happens, Dana's like, Yeah, but oh. this is the point in every other horror movie where when this happens, you're not supposed to laugh. This is the part where you're supposed to go, oh, f- yep. they are yeah, that's true. fucked. Yeah. This is Evil Dead when they go back to the bridge and the bridge is all fucked up, uh, right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Nothing right. you're going to be able to yep. do right now. But here we go with that fucking bouncing off the fucking walls <laughs> i also feel like this is really when they step on the gas this is when they stop yes because we're starting yeah. to remove players off the chessboard uh so pieces off the chessboard very quickly and so um i feel like the because the movie's only an hour and a half and so yep. like this is kind of the the last half hour when they really step on the gas and start whacking people and the monsters oh, are getting yeah. loose and everything so plus also not to interrupt but that's what i do is this is fucking Thor, okay? He's in your movie. He's yeah, supposed to right. be... He's not the final girl, but he's going to be right there next to the final girl. Yeah, you, would think. you would think. Yeah. 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 But no. no. No, what we have left is uh, the nerd. The egghead, quote unquote. <laughs> but uh, no, and this is when Dana gets it. She's like, fuck it. Puppeteers. Marty was fucking right. They won't let us leave. So the dude's like, all right, well, let's make a plan. Holden's like... Uh, all right, we'll we'll drive uh, the other direction. She's like, yeah, you can't. They, they've already planned for that. It's like, okay, well, we'll drive as far as we can into the woods, and then we'll just walk. And she's like, and he's like, oh yeah, wait, that- I'm sorry. By the way, I have written down my notes. Thor zapper. What? Thor zapper. <laughs> Thor zapper. <laughs> That's it. Just Thor needs no explanation. Gotcha. Yeah. It was uh, Zeus's wall. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, so she's like, yeah, hey, that's not going to work either. They planned for all this shit. And Holden's like, nah, we'll, we'll figure it out. And then knife right through the back of his fucking throat. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> such a good shot. And I like how at this point, too, we're just like, all right, let's just get these motherfuckers out of here. Boom, 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 yeah, let's go. We're done. <laughs> Camper goes off into the lake with uh, Dana in it, with the zombie in it that stabbed him through the fucking throat. She makes it out, by the way, swims up and... I love the cut of, of her swimming up as frantically as she can. It cuts to a smash cut of them pulling a beer out of a, <laughs> a mm-hmm. bucket full of that ice water. That was such a great cut, man. I <laughs> love that shot, too. That cut. Yeah. It was wonderful, dude. That's like the, it's... Uh, the cheesy horror equivalent of the 2001 cut. Yeah. With the bone to the spaceship. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because it's party time back at the facility. They've killed off the last... Yeah. Of the people they need to kill off. And 
our stand-in who's having it explained to them is like, well, wait, but the virgins. It's like, ah, don't worry about it. The virgin's optional. It's Just as long girl. as, yeah, as long as everybody dies before her and she suffers, we're golden. So cut to her swimming out and uh, getting some time on the dock. She lays down to, to try to catch her breath for a second. Just a second. And, uh, nope. Zombie comes up <laughs> with his chain and his fucking bear trap again. But it's great because then they start fighting and getting the shit kicked out of her. And this is just in the background of the dude that's like, hey, I got tequila. Yeah, it's tequila time. Yay. <laughs> and we're Well, see, this is always the thing that, again, this goes back to the horror movies, right? Jason, Freddy... Michael, anybody you can think of, they mm-hmm. kill how many people so easily? Yeah. But the last girl is always the one that takes the longest to kill, the most chances, that they have the most opportunities to kill her, and they don't kill her right away, and it comes mm-hmm. back to bite them. Yep, yep. So they're all yeah. trying to celebrate while they're beating. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I think that's one of my favorite parts as well, is just like the, the, the tonality of everything, you know, because it's like, it is, you know, she starts getting like, just hammered by, you know, the, mm-hmm. the guy that's left. And, yeah, immediately at that point, everyone runs in and all of, like, the happy Tequila! music starts up. And, yeah, and so it's like, yep. and then in the background, she's just getting the shit beat out of her. Yeah. But, like, but nobody cares and everyone's like, oh, what do you got going on tonight? Oh, I'm going over to Fred's. Oh, sweet. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, like, hey, I, I, um, well, it's, it's think about it. It's, like, it's a government job or it's not, but you're working something mm-hmm. like that, right? And it's kind of like working in the coroner's office. After a while, you're going to have your lunch right I, next to a dead body, right? I like the dude that shoots his shot, by the way. That's uh, finds the girl. That, oh, that, I got oh, two yeah. tickets for the ballet. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she she bet on the ballerina. She oh, was with the department that, that bet on nice. the ballerina, and he's like, "So I uh, noticed oh, you like wow, man, ballet, cool so I got two tickets." Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> that's, that's one nice. of them. If you you see, if you pause. But wait, the, hold on. Uh, Do you want to ask the chick out who bet on the ballerina who has a fucking face full of fucking teeth? Oh man, yeah, that's a scary one. That's a scare. Well, you know what? When you were talking about whether you wanted... Uh, Is her sister the girl from Teeth? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were twins. Uh, just one was inverted. Um, no, so <laughs> when you were talking about how you take the shot out of the... Uh, the uh, or take the hit off of the merman, you, you just try to avoid the mouth with her, Tim. That's all. That's true. <laughs> try to avoid hey, look, the mouth. Lots of other things you can do. But That's right. Still, Get you creative, know, buddy. It is a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one day. So uh, then we find out that the tunnel didn't pop because the power was uh, rerouted, rerouted from upstairs. The guy's like, that's weird. Then the red phone rings. Now, if you ever see a big red phone with one button on it and that rings, there's a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, because either a nuclear war or a Batman is calling. Yep. Could be a nuke <laughs> or a Batman. And uh, either way, you don't want to be around. That's all I'm saying. So back up to the fight, and Dana's is about to fucking buy the farm. But who shows up to rescue her, Tim? And how does he show up? What does he do? Well, the dude's uh, fucking swinging the shit out of his uh, ball and chain stand in with the the bear trap. He telescopes his fucking bong up, sticks it up, and catches the chain. <laughs> what a great move, man! <laughs> And, uh, Our yes. hero. That's it, right? There you the go. The hero of this fucking movie. Finally. Mm-hmm. Distract. Finally. As a white 53-year-old man, I see myself in movies. <laughs> Finally, you, you get <laughs> the representation time. you need, Tim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so then, yeah, Dana rips up one of the boards from the dock, KOs the zombie into the water, and they try to run back toward the cabin, but Marty found a hatch. And... Uh, <laughs> They get down there, and he's like, so, uh, what happened? She's like, uh, doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, they're all dead, huh? Hmm. And then she looks down, and you just see this twitching mass of flesh. <laughs> and he's like, well, I, uh, oh, I cut him up with a trowel before. Yeah, I just <laughs> remembered a zombie with a trowel, so... Uh, that was one of the best lines. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really one of those ones that's actually more fun to 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 tell and not show. 
Yeah. And just imagine mm-hmm. what it would look like with him right. you know, cutting off In... each appendage with a trowel. <laughs> his, with a dull cement trowel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his 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 delivery of the line and the expression on his face yeah. is so fucking perfect too, man. <laughs> So he's like, I found yeah, the way he plays shell shocked is, so, is such a great so job. Good, and yeah. just all of that delivery is, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's very funny. So he's like, all right, I found this elevator. So they sent these fucking zombies up to us. Uh, we have nowhere else we can go, by the way, because we're fucked. So mm-hmm. we might as well hit the elevator. And he reroutes the electrical panel. They jump into the elevator. And I like, like little bits of the zombie. He disemboweled, like falls in the hatch. He's like, yeah, ah, damn it. Him, yes. Including the zombie arm. <laughs> so then they are lowered down into what the script describes as, what was the line? Amazon here? warehouse from hell. Close. Actually, <laughs> it was, uh, the Costco of death. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Great Dude, I love that so it. much. Like the, the whole so third good. act, and just you know, when we go down there and they show the whole like labyrinthine, and yeah, thing you going get on, and all you the get to see, like, wow, you get to see everybody that was on the board. You get to see everybody that that uh, and associate with the little things they were picking mm-hmm. up, the trinkets. So, like you said, everything and really, that's how did set they get up. away with this? Because I mean, it's bl- almost blatant in some of the fucking things that they're showing, right? Yeah. The pinhead stand-in saw head or whatever mm-hmm. is pretty, pretty blatant. Um, I do like that when they get to him is when uh, she realizes what the fuck's going on and she starts pounding on the fucking glass like, "Yes, yeah. that's right, yeah, yeah." And, First and time he's, you never saw that motherfucker. Yeah, and he's just like looking at her like. You okay? I mean, I got saw blades through my head, but you're kind of freaking me out. <laughs> uh, so they're hiding in this cell, and you did you zoom out with the big establishing shot, and like you said, it's just rows and rows of these cubes with like killer robot in one. Like, there's so many yeah. things. Like, yeah, to, there's a robot scorpion. Yep. Uh, my did we get to it yet? Where my all time because we talked about in the bonus episode, my all time favorite monster in this entire fucking franchise thing. What's uh, that? The unicorn. The unicorn. Yes. The what unicorn. Said, I was going to bring it up. Dude, fantastic. Did. I loved it. It was such a great moment. <laughs> we talked about in the bonus episode, and I said, yep. I think it would be the greatest fucking thing ever that everybody who believes in unicorns and wants them to come back, if they did, and they were fucking monsters. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we had to wipe them off the face of the earth, because they were just killing people left and right. <laughs> So yeah, basically, what for the, for the end of the last act, it's exactly what you want it to be. They they discover Werewolf, where we got everything. I didn't see everybody. a mummy though. Did you? No, uh, maybe a little too on the nose. We I gotta, did like the uh, there was the the girl with like the missing face that was just like rows of shark teeth, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, nice like that was the ballerina, one. right? Yes. No, that was the tooth fairy. Okay, yes. Because Tooth Fairy's on the on the board too, so that could have been the Tooth Fairy. Too. Oh, actually, yeah. From what was that movie? I never yes. saw it, but didn't they? Darkness Falls was it? Something yeah, like that? that's right. Huh. I wonder. If I haven't that, seen that, that one either, but that. I've heard of that. Yeah, because I think I heard. See, that, yeah, one of the, the guys that looked like, like the guy teeth. from uh, Last Action Hero. The guy with the um, the glass the eye. No, no, the axe. The uh, the one who's supposed oh, to be yeah, the, yeah, the Reaper. I should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And has him on the rooftop. Yeah. So. Yeah, basically the operators locate the chamber that the, they're in, lower them down, and they give them some exposition. Dude's like, "Look, we got to kill him, not her, because if we if she dies first, we're fucked." Mm-hmm. In a, in appeasing the the ancient ones below, uh, so we're gonna go ahead. Why don't you step aside, sir? Dude with the gun, and as he goes to to take him out. Zombie hand just lends a lends a hand, literally, and grabs the dude's leg so they can get by him. Uh, then they uh, they end up getting the gun and, and the knife off of him, and running around and kind of ducking away from a SWAT team that attempts to intercept them. Right? They you would think they'd be on with specialty shit, right? No, they just have, like, uh, machine guns. 
But you can't kill a werewolf with a machine gun. You well, can't but kill they a aren't I mean, ghost. You can't kill bullets, a robot can't. scorpion with um, a fucking gun. True. If it has, maybe those bullets are silver, Tim. He's got you there. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I do agree with Tim, though. I think there should have been a better contingency plan to uh, stave off the release of these things, heaven forbid. It seems yeah. like they will fund it, right? Yeah. It seems like it. I mean, they built the whole underground bunker of doom, so, you know, with the, yeah. with the cube. The cube exists in this thing, apparently, so. They did. You know. They did build. Uh, yeah, it's the, they built the cube, but all the Resident Evil underground hive facility. Right. Which, by yeah. the way, I just want to say, I found this movie. I didn't watch it on the Blood Bank, Eddie. I'm sorry. I found this through uh, some other means. And there's mm-hmm. another movie called The Cabin that has the same fucking almost exact picture of the fucking cabin oh, coming apart God. like a fucking Rubik's Cube on it. I mean, I'm uh, sure that's exactly by design, right? Of How course. How else you find that movie? It almost got me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So... Yeah, like you said, they, they they make their way to a control room with the big stupid red button that's the release the hounds button. Yes, the the, <laughs> the Death Star button presses I, button to blow up everything. Yep, yeah. so she hits there, it. There isn't even a fucking cover over it that you have to flip before you press the button. <laughs> no, you, you want to have a cover at least. Maybe two keys you have to turn simultaneously. Like, yeah. yeah, something like that. At least. Why Just would you build that? Over there for sure. Why would you build that button? <laughs> That's the worst button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not kill everything. Open yeah. up everything. What the uh, fuck? Yeah, you know what? Give a, it's like in prison the, the when they give them all yard time. Except yeah. they're just letting every prisoner do it. And all the prisoners <laughs> are more dangerous than the guards. Right, that is true. That There's really no scenario where you ever need to let any of those things out of there. No, no. So, yeah, she hits the button and uh, dumps all... Of the fucking monsters. And at this point, it's just like, this is montage of death. Yeah. Everything is fucked. You have giant bats. You got giant a crazy zings. clown. You get the giant snake. You get the big, the unicorn that just horns the dude into the wall. <laughs> Love the unicorn kill. <laughs> Best kill. Absolutely. <laughs> Hellraiser. And yeah, and I, and I like that weird robot thing, too, that Tim was mentioning. The little, like, evil Wally thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scorpion there is apparently robot. in the uh, top left corner, uh, I did look up that there's a one eyed, one horned flying purple people eater in the opening oh, wow. of that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Nice. They even yeah. created no that. Frankenstein, as a though. No, no Frankenstein, though. No Frankenstein. This is. So, this is... I have a question for you guys uh, concerning this scene here. Yeah. Um, do you think this agency or organization. Uh, and and other worldly one or other uh, nations as well. Do you think they're collecting these monsters or creating? Yes, good them? question. How do they get this mm. fucking rogues gallery of fucking monsters? Good are these question. collected and and sourced locally sourced, uh, or or are they uh, created uh, out of the? East? Oh, Just, wait a second. Maybe the ancient ones yeah. sent them. Uh-huh. There right, you he, go. No, here's how you're it's gonna here's how you're gonna fulfill your part yep. of the contract because we're asking go. for a pretty tall order. Right, yeah, but we're gonna yeah. give you, we're gonna give you something. We're gonna get you yeah, some skin yeah, yeah. Here's in the a little something here. to help you out. Yeah, yeah. We're not just gonna leave you assed out hanging. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but then yeah, okay. God, so those first few years must have been rough, right? Because they would have just had like Bella Lugosi meeting a oh, yeah. gorilla. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been rough, man. The mummy. Maybe that's, like maybe that's why mummy wasn't there. Maybe that was like the OG squad, and they've since yeah. like, moved on and evolved. Yeah, they had some upgrades. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Nah, Universal monsters. <gasps> Yo, the mummy so got laid off. Gen. We got a fucking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, times, <laughs> fu- times are hard for pinhead. everyone. I right. mean, if you're going with the the United States military, what they probably do is take all the old and outdated ones and give them to rebel groups in other countries. Uh, so there's mummies <laughs> fighting over in Afghanistan. Okay, exactly. well, mummies, uh, I want to mummies that, are probably uh, mummies are probably selling their bodies as toilet paper during COVID nineteen. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's no, 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 hold on, hold on. You almost got it because Eddie, didn't you send us something in the Discord about mm-hmm. toilet paper that's now made out of cloth <laughs> instead of toilet paper? Right there, you go. Yeah, the reusable but, toilet paper that it's literally mummy, uh, mummy garb is all it was. You know. <laughs> Even mummy's got to make a living. Times is hard all over. <laughs> so yeah, they all get out. The SWAT team just starts fucking blasting. It's not working though, because the monsters just fucking eat everybody like yeah. they would. Right? It's what you want to see. It's also like they just do. Outgunned, dude, there's a lot of monsters there, man. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. 
I mean, and we see the the guns do nothing. Even the if the ever crazy clown. If there was clown, a time for a priest and a rabbi to walk into some place, yeah. now is the time. It is it exactly exactly? You'd think they uh, they need like a failover, like a thirteen ghost situation, right? You got to get Matthew Lillard down there with with his weird <laughs> pills and shit. Like, th- th- yeah, woefully unprepared for what happens. So they finally get into the main control room. With our two heroes, right? The zombies are in there attacking. One of the dudes does the noble sacrifice, pull the grenade, and blow up the zombies that are yeah. swarming him. And this is when Hadley gets blown clear of it, falls onto the ground with the ringing of the Call of Duty, kind of, you know, from the uh, concussion of the grenade. And who comes crawling up through the smoke, Tim? <laughs> it's the merman. Finally. <laughs> Finally get that payoff. Been waiting for it all movie. And he's I like, loved it. He was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> and he just chomps Yeah, I love down. how he's like, he's like, so he's like, this is how it goes out. I finally get it. This is how it goes out. God uh, damn it. Be careful what you wish for, man. Right. Because the merman just like crawls up on him, bites him on the neck, and then just spurts blood out of its blowhole, dude. <laughs> So good. <laughs> Love oh, it. the merman pays off so much. So then um, Citizen's still around for a second because he rounds a corner and Dana stabs him. <laughs> She's like, fuck, <laughs> there's fucking monsters everywhere. You're a monster. Stab. Oh, shit. Okay, you're not a monster. And Citizen's like, look, kill, kill him. Kill the dude. Falls on the ground. So like, all right, well, shit, this is we're all fucked. I guess get to the lowest point, maybe. I don't know. They jump through a hole that's been torn in the wall by a giant bat and get into this room where the giant carvings are in the walls with all the different big fucking crazy, you know, the fool and everything. And on the floor, you see the big ass symbol that was the necklace the dude had that when the first kill happened, he said a little mm-hmm. prayer yeah, thing it. and kissed. And and then the we've been hearing the voice of the director on the PA system. And so the director finally uh, shows quick up. Quick question. Did anybody recognize her voice right off the bat? Yes. No. Can't say I did. Well, Same. I, Tim. I was like, I know that voice, but I didn't think it was going to be her. Yeah. Which sucks, yeah. too, because I'm, like, usually really good at voice. Like, I'm that guy who every time there's a voice, I'm like, ah, I know it. Hold on. I, and then, like, I pause the movie or I'm, like, not paying attention to the story trying to figure out who it is. For some reason, hers I caught this time. I'm not usually great at that, which is weird. But mm. I don't know, for some reason, I'm like, oh, shit. But uh, <laughs> Sigourney Weaver comes in. Yay. And, Tim, this was supposed to be Bruce Campbell. Really? Oh, that makes sense. Oh, shit. See, that'd be yeah. better. Yeah, that would be better. Yeah, with all the evil. Because she's dad really not horror, and, is she? Uh, no, I mean you're always happy to see her, right? She's yeah, know, true. Welcome, but you know, yeah. yeah. I but also read that they went really for a uh, horror movie. Halloween, I also read the, the the first Alien movie is a horror movie, true. But after that, yeah, yeah, not not the icon they 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 needed, but still glad to see her in there. Yeah, I also so, read that they were trying to get um. Jamie Lee Curtis. That that would have been great, that too. Would have also mm, yeah. So she explains, look, there's always a whore, an athlete, a scholar, and a fool. They all have to die at the hands of the things that they summoned. And in a certain order, too. In, right? Yeah. yeah the, uh, the whore goes first. Then the athlete, the scholar, the fool. That is a hodgepodge. But the virgin doesn't have to die. And she's like, wait, virgin? It's like, look, we work with what we got, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, so says, yeah, so basically- again, they're cheating, right? Yeah, exactly. You, to your point, they are completely cheating, Tim. So she says, look, Marty's going to have to die or else the world ends. So here's the deal. You can either die with them or you can die for them. And I love the dude's line that's like, wow. I mean, they're both so tempting. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so, but behind his back, Dana's turncoating on him. Yep. She's got the gun. She's like, look, man, I'm going to have to. She's doing the right thing, right? What the it's fuck? It's for the greater good, right? You know, yeah. Like, hey, look, homie, you're going to die anyway, so you might as well not take billions of other people with you. 
Yeah. I mean, as a pothead in this group, I can say, yeah, look, eh, fuck it. At least let me take another hit. Yeah. <laughs> Which exactly. is pretty much, yeah, exactly how he responds to that. Basically, yeah. He's like, oh, shit, really? It's like, are you, are you going to be that brave? And we see Werewolf pops up behind her, jumps on her. Then we get the director, Sigourney Weaver, and, and Marty fighting it out. And the whole time, the little redneck zombie girl has been making her way slowly into the facility. So uh, Well, she has patience, right? Yeah. yeah she got nowhere her, else to be. Yeah, what else she got to do? It's her middle only, name, patience. She's also got one arm, so might as well have an axe in that arm. Makes her way down, and uh, Marty gets uh, warned, you know, by, by Dana, like, hey, because Dana, you know, Shot the werewolf enough times, but the werewolf didn't die. So I guess those weren't silver bullets. Mm -hmm. But she's... That goes your theory. True. So Dana's fucked up. Like, she's going to die. She got ripped up by that motherfucker. And uh, she's laying there on the steps about to die, but she kind of warns Marty, like, "Uh, look, he looks over. Oh, shit, zombie girl. Flips over, and and zombie girl axes the director right in the back. Ka-tunk! He's like, all right, cool. Or in the head. That's right, back of the head. Uh, so then, then uh, I love his move is like, shit, well, well, let's toss him off the side of this big fucking platform thing that we're <laughs> down to wherever the Elder Gods are and piss them off. So uh, then he goes over, sits down next to Dana, grabs a joint, lights <laughs> it up, and he just looks at her, and she's about to actually goes, you know what? I don't think Kurt has a cousin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the be- I love that line. At the so beginning much. of the movie, he's just like, oh, yeah, it's uh, my cousin's cabin. And you never yeah, think about nice. it, really. <laughs> Look, you know, cousin carries a lot of different meanings, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I love how she, he's like, she's like, sorry, I was going to shoot you. He's like, no, no, it's cool, man. No, I totally get it. Da, da, da. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know Eddie Whatever. was talking yeah, about 60 happen. Days In. Mm-hmm. But one of my favorite shows is Love at the Lockup, and this oh, guy God. just got busted talking to 38 different women while he was talking to this one chick in jail, mm-hmm. and he convinced her that he has 38 female cousins that he talks to all oh, the time. Oh, my God. Damn. Wow. <laughs> Man, I'm a slick talker, but that that is... Whew. That is S tier right there. Yeah, well, that, Dude, that you also takes like you get your fucking game built up. Let me tell mm-hmm. you. <laughs> There's also a certain amount of balls that come with that, where it's just like, wow, dude, to even yeah. try to go for that one, right? I would never, I would I mean, never imagine that it would actually work to even attempt. But I mean, here even you if are. you, yeah, even if you get busted doing it, you're like, look, man, hats off to you for trying. You know, right. like <laughs> I gotta give yeah, you it's one. Okay. She's my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> so they're having their cigarette. And the dude's all like, it's man, that would have been a joint, cigarette. right? It's a marijuana cigarette. They're having their marijuana Finally, she cigarette. she smokes a joint. Her first joint, maybe, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's true. So uh, then they're all like, huh, so giant elder gods going up on the earth, destroying the whole fucking thing, huh? Okay, like, now man. here's my question is, this was meant to happen, right? Because why was there an order that came from upstairs? Okay, okay? so. Not to th- blow the tunnel. It wasn't that an order came not to blow the tunnel. They did not get the order to blow the tunnel. Because there was a glitch in the system. Yes, that glitch in the system was Marty at that control panel fucking with the electricity when he was in the uh, uh, up above where the elevator was. No, because that happens later, doesn't it? Yeah, that does happen after. Oh, Oh, but I think he also does mention, he's like, oh, I was was hanging around and I found this thing here. So I guess you could infer that, like... No, because they said, basically the impression that I got was that tunnel was supposed to blow once they were like 10 miles away from it. As yeah, soon as they that, went through it, and that was it. So there was no way out, ever. Because he says at one point, it was supposed to go hours ago, and he says, yeah, but we never got the call from upstairs. Right, right. And that's when he goes, well, upstairs. Like, that's well, like an extra big thing, so. Maybe that's uh, to go to the whole thing of the, uh, how they don't do anything correctly. <laughs> Maybe the person who was supposed to make the call slept in or forgot. Like, yeah. Or like you said, yeah, maybe... again, the movie's been saying that for all these years, at least since the movies have existed, that yeah. they've been pulling this off. Well, and one country had a perfect record, and yeah. America's like 99%. Right, right. Yeah. 
It's well, a good point, Tim. Or maybe since Japan has always been perfect, America's never actually had to do it. That could be too. And when push comes to shove, right? Yeah. Well, he did say Japan always does it, but uh, we're number two. But They've that been just back means hundred. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that just thousand. means we'll uh, try harder. So, yeah. So uh, they kind of just hang out and talk about how well they wish they were up there to watch the world end, but eh. then we see everything collapse around them. And this giant fucking hand just reach up, punch through the cabin, slam onto the ground. It it reaches over Vegas. It grabs uh, Trash Can Man's nuke, picks it up, and throws it yeah. on them to end the stand. <laughs> See, we thought he was throwing away the nuke. We thought it was a good guy. But it turns yeah. out it's a bad guy. Turns out yeah. it was an elder uh, eldritch horror from the abyss. And it's that's Randall Cabin Flag's in the Woods. Boss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, upper management had to step in. It's so. the hand job guy from 60 Days In. <laughs> from season four. <laughs> Yo, a, let me tell you, Cthulhu, I'll give you a hand job if I get to live, okay? Just an autonomous hand, yeah. Here to jerk off the world. We're doing this. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, guys, I think that's everything I had to cover on the movies. Anything I missed or you guys wanted to bring up? No, I think that landed think uh, landed all the notes there. I yeah, think we, I think yeah, we man, did. I think we got it covered. Wonderful I will movie. say, um, for for an hour and a half long movie, I love mm-hmm. that I notice new things every time I watch it. Oh, they yeah. give me there is yeah. like just such a feast for the eyes, and for fans of this genre, both comedy and horror alike, mm-hmm. uh, there's just something for everybody here. It's yeah, Absolutely. it's wonderful. It's so well done, and like you said, it moves at such a great pace too that it, it's. Definitely worthy of rewatching. In it just some cases, so much in in such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's a good middle of the rotor. You know, it's safe enough and tame enough for people that don't like gore porn yeah. or like a hardcore yeah. horror film. And there's enough comedy there to kind of like yeah. rein it in. Uh, but there's enough for gore and horror fans to really like to, to everything we just talked about. That's on the the list and the menu. All the monsters oh, yeah, they're showing the us. End. It's it's mm-hmm. a lovable, uh, you know, film all the way across the board. It's, it's something that any, li- li- really anybody could watch and get something from. Absolutely, absolutely. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me to discuss Cabin in the Woods. If people liked hearing you talk, let's say, on this yeah, podcast, big. and they were like, "Hey, is there anything else that we could listen to on the internet with these two fellas? Well, where might they go?" Well, there's a number of different places. Basically, anywhere you listen to your favorite programs, whatever streaming platform, from the Google to the Spotify to the Apple and everything in between, we're going to be on there. We've also got a website, and our program, once again, is Esoterica Cinema. And if you go to esotericacinema.com or you search all of the socials for Esoterica Cinema, you will find us. Uh, Like I said, if you go to all of your favorite streaming platforms or you can go to the website and we have a player over there. And yeah, we do a lot of, uh, we, we look at a lot of different films, so we've got some heavy genre films, like, you know, we would look at this one, and Eddie, obviously, we had you on to look at Perfect Blue, mm-hmm. and then we do also look at a lot of, you know, prestige film, art films, we do a lot of Criterion, some foreign films, so really run the gamut, like, we don't really focus on any one genre in particular, so if anybody listening, uh, you know, like, like if you like horror, we've got horror for you, and if you like other stuff, we've got that for you, too. Outstanding. What about you, Tim? Is there anything else on the internet you want people to pay attention to? Uh, well, I'm going to be on the grind, man. I think I get. I we did just we just did Roller Coaster. I got another movie coming out with them, and uh, I think Daniel's show. I'm going to be on pretty soon. Plus, I think there's uh, a bonus episode with me coming out that's going to be on, right? But you have to yep. be a paying member. Yeah, you got to be a paying member, and Daniel's show, of course, is the Mustachio Podcastio. You can check those guys I just, out. I like the way I should say that. Everybody just assumes it's a mustachio yeah. podcastio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not any other Daniel you might know and go on no. their podcast. Is so, there yeah. only one Daniel on the internet? That's... There's only one Daniel period in the entire world. Mm-hmm. It's like that Jet Li movie, The One. He's done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you want to take a listen to some of our bonus episodes, get access to The Blood Bank with over 3,000. Thousand films. Three thousand one hundred and seventy-three. I think. Damn. I yep. Just go to patreon.com forward slash bloody bits and sign up. Um, other than that, folks, thank you for listening. Thank you for. Oh, and part- shave your balls. Kiss. 
Yeah, shave your balls if you want. Uh, Manscaped.com, promo code BITS20. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us to talk about this. And this is how we end it. <laughs>